when last we left off, the party had been exploring the Empire of the Sun. Um, Tempest and Rhodes decided that they were going to go to the Great Library, and Yzmir and Katiara went to the Magic Market area where there's a couple of temples. And Yerin uh, wasn't able to join us, but we, we have decided that she is uh, with Tempest and Rhodes at the Great Library at the moment. Um, so who would like to go first? I mean, catch us up. Have we decided that Yerin was with us the whole time, is aware of everything that had gone on? Like, do we need to do any red conjuration or explanation? Uh, I sent her a uh, brief description of the session. Um, Yerin, do you have any questions or anything that you'd like uh, more elaboration on? Um, one. Sorry, I'm just getting back to it. Sure. Um, when Tempest uh, had his, uh, well, phrased here, got his ass absolutely handed to him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> two, nat two natural <laughs> yeah. 20s will do that to you. What <laughs> happened with the people who were after Kichiar in that sense? Did they go away? What, what was the end result of that? So I know Tempest lost the fight, um, but I don't know what happened in the situation. Uh, the uh, the rogues basically uh, flipped a coin to the innkeeper, said, uh, sorry about the mess, and left. Okay, so they know he's around here somewhere, but don't have him and aren't actively stalking him to our knowledge. Right. Okay, cool. And so then we went to a library instead. Yeah, um, I, I believe it was Tempest that was the driving force behind wanting to go to the library. Oh, and... Uh... My name in town here is Festus. Oh, that's or, useful to know. Yeah, Ori is Rhodes. Uh, Kane is Tempest. And Grace uh, is Yzmir. I believe Tempest insisted on being referred to as Hey You. <laughs> Do I have yeah, a name here? Walking. Uh, no, because everybody came up with their own. What would you like yours to be? I will need a moment. I'm trying to find the list posted again. Oh, and I, uh, Tempest, I, I spelled your name H A Y U. Close enough. Okay, well, one last detail uh, or question for Yurene is were, were you aware of Tempest admitting what he had done while in the Fey realm and uh, telling you about his objective uh, now that he, with what he had gained in the Fey realm, with the information he had gotten there? Not specifically. Can you refresh me on that, please? Uh, so Tempest would have come back much older from the fail realm he clearly lost uh a, even a decade or two of his life in there so he's kind of looking i've been referring to him as old man tempest he's you know kind of in his middle ages now just kind of graying hair not as bulky as he used to be but still very muscular and just kind of kind of old and weathered looking lines around his eyes and he would have told you guys that uh he that met a devil and made a deal with it where it was a hell wasp. He let it lay its eggs in his body in exchange for information about how to find the storm Lord. And he would have told you that he is now going to be looking for information about the progenitor Titans, the initial creations of the storm Lord that it creates on every single world that it seeds with life. And that if he can find these Titans, they might hold the key to finding the storm Lord. Um, and I think that's the bones of what he would have admitted to and what he's admitted to seeking at the library. So that might be a, a little bit of a... That is context she needed, yes. She may make it difficult for you to search at the library. Ooh, I can't wait to see you stop me. He'll just blow in your ear and you'll lose all your concentration. <laughs> or she'll get us kicked out of the library. You know, there's lots of different options. And she is quite happy to try all of them. She's I not alone. There is also Rhodes. I can't wait to see you rude, Yurene. <laughs> I'm just imagining Yurene knocking a bookshelf, like like a book off a bookshelf, and the librarian glaring at her and saying, pick that up, and she going, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I can see that happening that way, yeah. I know, she'll bring Tempest the wrong tea. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, so that, that's enough conjecture. Uh, who wants to pick up first? Uh, do we want to elect somebody from either group and roll for it? By the way, Rhodes should be checking his um, private messages on a regular basis. <laughs> oh, I'll be checking. 
I challenge KTR to a roll off. Let's both of us roll a d20, and whoever wins the roll goes first. All right. Coming at you with a mighty 12 in the forge. Let's see what I got. <laughs> 19. KTR and Yzmir are going first. Okay. Uh, so you guys make your way to the east part of town. Um, as you uh, made your way uh, along the north side of the wall, um, it was mostly just kind of uh, run-down housing, um, uh, residential area, lots of kids playing around in the streets, uh, people going about their business. Um, but then as, as you head uh, kind of southeast into the quarter you find yourself in, um, you do note that it uh, the, the quality of the buildings improves quite a bit. Everything is uh, very well kept, and there's an air of magic about the area. You, you see uh, colored lights, and uh, the flowers bloom just a little more brightly and large. Um, everything uh, just has a kind of a cast to it that uh, makes this place feel whimsical. Well, uh, so, um, how are you feeling today, uh, Ori? Not Ori. Uh, sorry, Grace. So far, so good. Just nothing yet. How well, about... yeah, it, uh, me? Well, you know, uh, it's it's. It's been an interesting morning, uh, dealing with everything. Yeah, yes, um, we have to do something about that, because right now, even with your disguise, you're drawing attention. I am? Sorry, that could be me. Were yeah. Rhodes and Yzmir informed about what happened? Uh, did, uh, did you guys tell? Uh, I Yzmir? think we... I think we got the debriefing of everything in the morning because I remember there was a fair right. bit of an argument in yeah, the there morning was, about there was when a, we should handle business. Yeah, Tempest was hurt and had to basically let, let you guys know what happened. Uh, okay. So yeah, you, you are aware. Okay, just making sure. Uh, yes, because it gets suspicious when the very people who are looking for you get attacked, even if it's not directly by you, but potentially by associates. And even though you've got your disguise going, you're still very tall. Uh, I've been actually walking somewhat slouched to try and get rid of that. Well, I'm not as tall as I am normally the way I'm walking now. Just saying, I if we're trying not to draw attention to you, we're going to... It It's just a sign we have to be more careful. It's something to think about on top of everything else. Well, that's, that's totally fair, you know. Um... I, I, I really can't uh, argue with that, but, uh, well, instead of worrying about me, let's focus on focus on you and uh, trying to scare up a midwife or something, because it seems like it ain't a thing that these people believe in. Well, I'm sure there's plenty. I just don't know where to look, because I never thought I'd have to deal with this, but maybe there's a temple or something. Well, didn't... Didn't that guy in the temple just basically say that they they are starting to lose their contact with their gods, and so like everybody would go to the temple and count on religious healing, but that don't seem to be a thing anymore. I mean, if you need the healing, but someone's got to know how this works. Were we looking for an apothecary? I think so. Something something like that. Someone who knows someone. Yeah, I think that's uh, why you guys headed to the magic market is because uh, they uh, they you were told that there's an apothecary there. Yeah, and you would think that the midwives would be heading off to the apothecary because since they probably don't use magic, they need to use you know poultices and herbs and that sort of stuff for their doings. Mm-hmm. So, well, I guess let's get there. This feels like the right place. Looks like the starting to look like the right place. Hartla does. And I pat her on the shoulder and I give her a, a tight little smile. Yeah, you guys uh, walk not too too far into the magic market and you do see uh, an apothecary. Well, uh, after you, uh, Grace. Well, these beer will just let out a deep sigh and nod and go to head in. Okay. 
uh, you head in and you'd see uh, the shelves in this shop <coughs> are mostly bare. Um, there, you, you do, uh, you, you don't see anybody out front uh, working, but you do hear uh, the sounds of uh, somebody in the back. Uh, there's like a, a sheet hanging between uh, the front of the store and the back, and you can hear uh, motion in the back. Uh, somebody's working, but uh, you don't see any customers in here. Uh, so there was no like, door uh like bell attached to the door or any kind of sound effect when it opens no okay i'm going to take advantage of this time just to look about the shop and try and get an i gauge an idea of like what he's got and like does it look to be like a snake oil place or a place that's actually got real stuff um give me an pana check okay um <clears throat> looking at the labels of the potions uh, you judge that uh, they're all potions that you've heard of um, in other apothecaries and that you've found in travels and stuff, uh, but the most of the labels don't have potions associated with them. The potions are gone. Um, you do see like there's a glass case uh, closer to the back that has uh, a few potions in it uh, that are uh, more rare, um, but basically anything that's common and uncommon has been uh, is no longer in the the shop, um, but you, you do get the sense that it's legitimate. Okay. Um, oh, Grace, seems like there's been a hell of a run on uh, what this shop provides, don't it? Well, I'm under the impression that they've been dealing with, um, you know, the undead issue a little more, just not totally overrun yet. Yeah, that's true. That's true indeed. <sighs> okay. Um... So having given Kitiara a chance to just look around, Yzmir is going to go up to the, I guess, counter if there is one and yeah. kind of knock on the wood and just, hello? Um, you hear a couple of voices in the back and uh, shuffling of feet and soon enough uh, a head peeks out from behind the curtain and you see a disheveled uh, older woman uh, looking out at you and says, uh, yes, yes, what can I do for you? Oh, uh, well, either you can help me or you can point me in the right direction. Hope in one of the two. Uh, I'll certainly do my best. Okay, um, oh, well, long and short of it is, um, <laughs> um, I'm expecting for the first time, and I, I have no idea what to expect. I had never really had anyone to talk about it with, so I was, and the first, temple I ran into wasn't very helpful, so I was hoping maybe you or someone could point me towards a midwife or something like that. Oh, dearie, dearie, your first one. That's so exciting. Congratulations. Now, if I were to help you, I think I would send you on to the Temple of Denier. Uh, it's just down the road from here to the east. Uh, they uh, worship all sorts of knowledge and have uh, midwives there, I believe, as well as, you know, the more classical uh, clerical healing uh, of the gods uh, to, to help you through with uh, any afterbirth pains and such. Um, they would be an excellent source, uh, to be sure. Unfortunately, I am almost completely out of stock of anything that would help you. Uh, we've had a, a rather bad run uh, the last little while, and the, the city has been uh, taking potions as fast as we can make them to help uh, with the the defenses on on the the south and the the east walls. Well, you're obviously a very skilled uh, apothecary, and I'm sure that everyone appreciates all the work and effort you're doing. She she uh, gives you a small smile. Says, "Well." Uh -huh. Thank you very much. I'm sorry I can't be more help myself. Uh, these are difficult times. Oh, what a time to have a child. Oh, well, I do hope that everything goes well for you. Oh, I hope so, too. That's why I'm trying to, I guess, get things figured out early. Yes, yes, you're, you're not even showing. It's uh, you've, you've got lots of time to prepare for everything, I'm sure. I think so, but um, I just feel like with how things are going, it doesn't hurt to look ahead, right? 
Yes, yes, we have to we have to hold on to hope for the future. Well, congratulations to the both of you. Uh, you make a, a very handsome couple, and uh, I wish I wish you all the best. Uh, I have to get back to work now. Good day. Uh, uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Thanks. Yep. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I'm rightly proud of uh, the missus here. Thank you. Grace, let's go. <laughs> could have just said you're... And as we walk out, she's like, you could have just said you're the uncle. Well, it's not like we're going to be going back there, so... And hopefully we'll be the hell out of here. Uh, or I'll at least be out of the hell, the hell out of here and hold up somewhere if you want to Stay close and make sure. I have know. no idea what I'm planning on that front. We are not even going there. <laughs> All right. Well spoken. Shall we go to that Temple of Denier then? Yeah. God of knowledge, right? I guess if anyone's going to know something. Well, they better know babies. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you guys start making your way over to the temple. We'll... Uh head on over to Tempest Roads and Yereen. Uh, you guys walk through the old town and uh, make your way to the Great Library. It's uh, it's very large, as the name would imply, and uh, just filled with cases upon cases of books um, going up uh, five stories. Uh, you can see all the way up and all the books. Uh, just a dizzying array of, of knowledge uh, kept here. Uh, and there is a uh, librarian at the front desk uh, who peeks over his glasses at you as you enter and, and gives you a, a small wave. Uh, so Rhodes will put an arm around both Yurin and Tempest. So he's walking between them and kind of goad them up to the librarian's desk. And like, just kind of, he's talking a bit louder than he needs to. Um, but he is also talking in a way that makes it seem like this is his regular volume. And he's just like, oh, good morning. I was hoping you could help myself and my friends here. I'm just going to look for the code names again. <laughs> uh, myself and my friends here, Mina and Hey You, and I'm Ori, by the way. We're looking for some specific books. Uh, what was it we were looking for again, Hey You? I'm not over that. Nope, no sound. We have lost Tempest. How about now? Yes, there, we there you are. There you are. Okay, hey, terribly sorry to interject. Um, was actually hoping to have a quick conversation before we entered the library, if that's okay, if you guys don't mind. Sure. Uh, so before we get into the library, Tempest is going to go to Rhodes and is going to say, uh, so Rhodes, uh, is it still complicated between you and Izmir? Uh, uh, <laughs> um, what does that have to do with the library? Well, I, I just need to know, because I mean... If the two of you are committed and happy and, you know, determined to live life together, raising your child, then I, I need to know that for the library. Why does that matter for the library? Well, because we're going to be going in there looking for very important information. Yureen and I are in a committed relationship. That Nothing is going to affect that. But if we need somebody to seduce a librarian or, you know, kiss a book boy in order to distract them while we go for the hidden books, uh, it's nice to know that you are not committed to Yurine and that it's still complicated. If, if anybody needs to take a bite off a, some hot man muffin, you're there for us. <laughs> hot man muffin. I'm writing uh, that down. Uh, Rhodes is just going to face plant like face palm. He's he's got he's got nothing to say to that. He's gonna like just kind of smack his palm into his face and give the whole like yeah yeah sure that's that sounds great Tempest. And Tempest will nod seriously at Yurin and say, "All right, if we need to seduce somebody, Rhodes is in for it." Does that mean everybody has to seduce Rhodes? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. No, no, no. It's it's Rhodes is going to be doing the seducing of librarians. If oh, was... okay. That took me aback for a moment. If oh, this was sorry. Just... I need to step away. Baby needs help. Just a minute. <laughs> if this was just two years prior, I probably would have enjoyed this a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> I really had no idea where he was going. Oh, me neither. I'm I still not did. sure I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's Tempest. 
even with this conversation, I would still like Rhodes' introduction to stand, but he will notably wink at the librarian at the desk. Great. Um, uh, so you've introduced everybody. Uh, um, and and well, after the Rhodes has spoken up, Eurene speaks up. Oh. And says, yeah, my fiance, Hey You, is really excited about some of your information. Well, that is, uh, you've come to the right place, then, if you're excited about information and knowledge. We have uh, a great selection of books. Um, what uh, sort of topics are you interested in studying? I'd certainly uh, be happy to help you uh, find uh, the right location and to help you hasten your search. I think we might need Tempest back for this. Or roads to start seducing right away. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold back on this one and wait for Tempest. <laughs> I have already winked at the library at uh, the librarian. TBD, how far this goes? You know that's pretty tame start there. It's a uh, it's a slow burn. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> I think well, that Irene is becoming more orcish. For I once, am thinking where this is going. For once in his life, I think Rhodes would like to just take things slow. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anything could happen. That would be a first. You know, let's get to know this one before, you know, he puts another baby in somebody. <laughs> Libraries oh. are very exciting places. Uh, well, I was just going to say it's uh, it's basically Rhodes playing to his type, you know, to his strengths. We do his... want to use all of our own unique talents. I was just about to ask if his strengths was baby making. <laughs> yeah, Potentially, cool. yes. <laughs> Like, I didn't know you had so many until recently, but... Same! Fancy that! <laughs> <laughs> well, hidden strengths are also a thing. Uh, there are so many non-PG jokes to be made to that. <laughs> Sorry about that. I hope you guys weren't waiting for me. We, we did a little bit. Not for long. Okay, well, teasing roads is all that I had in mind. We can head into the library now. Oh, we continued that. So, good. Well done. You're caught up. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Yareen was just mentioning how her fiancé, hey, you, was so excited to look into the books. <laughs> you you told this to the head librarian? Uh-huh. Well, Tempest's going to give you a look and is then going to turn back to the librarian and say, Now see here, I's just a poor country orc who's hoping to learn about literacy. Ah, uh, I, I see. Uh, Specific, specifically literacy about great mythic events. I need arcane knowledge of ancient histories and myth. That's an interesting place to begin. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, we do have histories going back to the, the founding of uh, the Kingdom of the Sun, if uh, that is uh, of your interest. Uh, the first humans to settle in, in these lands. That's not going to do it, Mac. Um, and he's going to look at the group and he's going to turn back to him. Is there any chance you and I could speak in private? Oh, honey, well, you wouldn't want to go anywhere without me. Usually... We know that. Sorry, <laughs> we know that you're just a simple country orc, and you do need our help to understand these larger things. <laughs> Tempest's <laughs> eyes are going to narrow just a little bit, and he's going to say, "Well, that is true." Um, and he's we will gonna... be clinging to his arm. Both of you on either side. Yeah. <laughs> What a, man, like what a man, what a man, what a man, what a man, what a man. Library <laughs> dates are best dates. <laughs> I, I have gone on some good dates at bookstores. Um, okay. Well, then he's just going to look at him and he's going to say, I think that the history I need goes even further back. Can you tell me about the Progenitor Titans? Oh, um, <clears throat> I know, know nothing of these. Uh, what did you call them? Progenitor Titans? No, nothing at all. We have no books on the topic, I'm sure. Do I believe him? I don't know, do you? And do I. You can roll an intake roll. Do I have DM inspiration? Um, I don't know if you do. I don't believe him at all, so I'm going to be like, well, we tried, we should go, guys. <laughs> hey, Ryan, give me DM inspiration, because I'm just going to blast it away immediately on this insight roll. All right, fine. Oh. I don't know how I rolled three die there. Um, either, but cool. Uh, but even 
even the two and the eleven, the eleven would have beat their nine in deception anyway. Um, yeah, Rhodes has no idea, uh, believes that this guy's being completely honest. But Irene and Tempest, you both get the sense that he is being cagey and knows more than he's saying. Tempest is going to sigh and say, okay, look, you have any divine casters among your library staff who have lost their powers? I can help you. Um, I'm not sure that's the kind of help they need. Uh, no, we, we are not a temple. We are a library. Um, we serve the university, so we have you know, those who seek lore, such as uh, bards, and we have wizards uh, from the wizard school next door who come over and peruse our knowledge. Uh, we don't uh, cater so much to uh, clerics. Any clerics who wish knowledge would go to the Temple of Denier. Tempest is going to lean in a little bit with uh, Urine and Rhodes, you know, holding on to him. I kind of imagine them like sort of being pulled a few centimeters closer. And he's going to say, do you want to trade me for the knowledge of what is happening right now? I can tell you everything. I can tell you about why the gods are going quiet. I can tell you about the war in heaven. I can even tell you your future and the calamity that is coming to the city. <clears throat> oh, um, uh... What kind of check do you want to make for that? Intimidation or persuasion? I'd prefer intimidation because I think that Tempest is just like doing his eye bulgy mad dog intense kind of whisper talk at the guy. I right. would like to do I would like to just smile the most charming smile ever to try and take away the bite of Tempest's appearance. Yeah. <laughs> like I would just love to look like the most charming cherubic person so like it, to make him look less mean because he's in such good company. <laughs> are you that. trying to Im are you trying to impose disadvantage on my check? Absolutely I am. It's just oh. what I was going to say. Okay, <laughs> now Ryan, going back to my awful scars that I got like ages ago, do I still have advantage on intimidate check so would this just be a straight roll? It'll be a straight roll, yeah. I tried. <laughs> Good job. I mean, it was sort of successful, except until I rolled a seventeen plus three. Oof. Uh, yeah. The this uh, this mousy librarian is uh, the has fallen back into his chair and is looking quite afraid of you. And Tempest is just going to say, "This is probably a little bit beyond you, don't you think? Maybe you should go find your manager." Uh, uh, yes, sir. And uh, he just scurries out of, out of his chair and, and runs off to a back room. Well, that went very well. Good sure did, sweeties. And Tempest is going to give the both of you a great big pat on the butt with a little squeeze, squeeze, honk, honk. <laughs> Excuse you. You're a promised man, sir. And Yurene will just turn beet red. But not let go? Oh, yeah. We'll hang out at the desk until something else changes, I guess. Okay, um, it doesn't take long uh, before uh, an elderly librarian comes out to the desk and uh, says, Yes, I, I hear you are uh, giving my staff some grief. No grief. I desire esoteric knowledge. They tried to steer me away from it. I offered them incredible knowledge in exchange, and now you're here. To figure out what to do with me. Right. Well, uh, perhaps we should exchange knowledge on what we understand to be happening at the moment and see where it goes from there. Please, will you come with me to a, a side chamber where we can uh, conduct a formal meeting? And Tempest is going to say, well, uh, I'll leave the two of you to it then. Oh, and no, honey, uh, he'll I'm say, fine. good luck, sweeties, and he'll give Rhodes a little peck on the cheek, and he'll swoop Yurine back for a dip, and we'll uh, give her a big old peck. And then he'll follow the librarian. Your choice if you're coming with me or not. Oh, she, we, are, we are coming with coming. you. She hasn't let go. She liked the kiss, but didn't let go of his arm. <laughs> All right. Rhodes uh, will, so sorry, Rhodes will also give another mm -hmm. reminder that we have to come because, you know, no. you're, so, you're such a simple country orc. Rhodes, Yurine, can anybody hear me? Yep. Yeah, you're still coming through. Okay, what are you guys doing? Are you going to come with us? Oh, yes. Yes, that is correct. Okay, then we'll all follow the librarian. 
Okay, you guys follow. Sorry, just typing a little bit here. Um, you guys uh, follow the librarian into a side chamber. Um, the librarian who was at the desk uh, brings in a tray of um, meats and cheeses and, uh, and some fresh rolls and lays them down on the table and uh, quickly lets himself out, um, closing the door behind him. And the uh, the elder librarian waves to seats around a grand table and says, please, have a seat. Uh, perhaps I'll save us some time and go first. Um, according to all of the knowledge that we have gathered from the temples, it appears that gods are going silent, particularly when their followers perish. Uh, the why of that remains a mystery, but it has been noted that when especially priests of, uh, and clerics of some uh, renown die, uh, it is not long after that uh, the gods begin to grow distant and it becomes more difficult for their followers to be granted the boons of the gods. Uh, there is has been... Uh, some communion, especially from the followers of Denir, uh, whose god is still fully with us, uh, that there is a war uh, currently going on in presumably both the heavens and hells. Uh, the reasons for the failures are that the gods are being imprisoned and once they are captured by elder gods, uh, they are no longer able to communicate with their faithful. Denir has been kind enough to take in those who have lost their gods um, and uh, has been helping to bolster the city defenses as best they can. Uh, is there anything that you would like to add to that? Tempest is going to look at both Urine and Rhodes, and he's going to say, I'll be honest with you, that there are multiple interests within even our small group, and it would be unfair of me to present my information completely separately of what my companions might have to say. I'll tell you that you know most of what we can tell you, but I can tell you why. We can also give you additional options beyond Denier to empower your clerics, and some of which are uh, infallible, can't be silenced, so that the city's clerical defenses will be even more strengthened should the power of Denier fail. Very well, I'm listening. Oh no. Why should I just give this information away? Can you at least even confirm if you have what I'm seeking? What do you seek? Information about the Progenitor Titans, the creatures that first seeded this world with life. Air, earth, fire, and water. Uh, the tomes we had that dealt with their existence uh, were taken. Um, they are no longer in this library. I'll give you what I know if you tell me where I might find them. Deal? Certainly. And with a look at... Urine and Rhodes. Here's your chance, guys. Do you have any way to stop me from talking? Um, no, we'll let you talk. Or at least Urine's not going to try stopping. Uh, Rhodes is holding his silence for now. Then Tempest is going to just do his best to to tie in the blanks of, of what that old guy said. I mean, you recounted most of what we already knew, but uh, he'll tell him a little bit of his personal anecdote of dying and seeing the war in heaven, and he'll specifically tell you about the triumvirate of Elder Gods. He'll tell you about Dalreth, he'll tell you about Shiro, and he'll tell you about their creature, the Stormlord. He'll explain how they fit into the picture, how Stormlord aided the other gods in stealing Shiro and Dalreth away, and uh, he'll even go so far as to say that with the resurgence of Shiro and Dalreth, uh, for those that wish to devote themselves to the light and blindly follow Shiro to do what they think is right, he'll provide them with power. For those that have questions or seek knowledge or have wishes, Dalreth will be their patron. Um, and he'll look at Rhodes and just say that um, there are other options as well, for there are other gods currently fighting uh, those two and have managed to remain free of their influence for now. 
uh, Rhodes will gesture to his scars because uh, I assume he still has all of the lightning scars and just be like, I don't recommend the Elder Gods. They are quite vengeful if you don't bend to their will. Also, um, if you bend to their will, you're betraying your current gods. Um, they need your devotion as well. I appreciate all of this information. It uh, is invaluable. Sure. Tempest is going to elbow uh, Rhodes and say, perhaps you might also want to tell them about the god that is empowering your spells as an alternative to the Elder Gods? Well, yes, I was getting there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't suppose I would have made extra um, tal talismans? Is that the word I'm looking for? On my spare time to hand out? Uh, you could have. Is that something I can retroactively say I did overnight? Sure. Cool. Uh, so in very much the same uh, manner of a missionary, I'm going to pull out one of these um, talismans, amulets, whatever I made, and hand it over to the librarian and be like, Tempest is still fighting strong. You can still support him in this. <clears throat> well, I'm not much of a, a holy man myself, but uh, this is good to know that there are other gods that are still fighting. Holy man or not. Sorry. Uh, holy man or not, this information could be valuable for people who really, truly, deeply need it. Indeed. I would suggest uh, taking this news to other temples around the city. Uh, Tempest, I believe, is a god of war. Um, you may have your best chances at the Temple of Palor and the Temple of Foltis. They are not what I'd call warlike. They're uh, more focused on uh, spreading of the light. Uh, but that can be interpreted uh, widely. Uh, so there would be paladins and such among their order who may uh, turn to Tempest and uh, help grow that faith. Yurene looks like she is swallowing live bees, but she speaks up. Um, both of the two that he is trying to convince you of, Shero and Dalrath, seek to harm the Stormlord who only supports life. Just please take care. I, I want to support life too. I hope you do as well. well thank you for the information. It's a great deal to weigh. If, uh, if you do wish to, to spread these faiths uh, among the temples, you are, of course, free to do so. Uh, we can use any edge that we can get against the onslaught that has come against our walls. Now I believe we are owed something. Where are these books that speak of the progenitor titans? The book that you seek, or rather, the catalogs, were taken uh, some years back uh, by King Ethelric's men. Uh, they were seeking ancient knowledge um, and uh, went through the entire library, including our uh, hidden stores. And when they discovered these books of uh, creation, as they were, um, said that they were, well, they said some rather unflattering things and uh, took the books. Uh, they said that they were taking them for the king's collection in his own libraries where it would not be accessible by the general public. Are you willing to trade further information with us? Nothing quite as profound, but perhaps of interest to your library? Certainly. You have any interest in knowing about the Northern Elves, their kingdom, and how to access their ancient palace? Oh, the ancient elves of the North, <clears throat> whose last king was the Canopy King, he died quite some time back. Uh, I imagine that uh, what remained of his kingdom has fallen to ruin over the millennia. Did I lose you? I can still hear you. Okay. Then we must have lost Tempest. Sorry, I had to drop out for a second. Can you repeat that? Um, he basically just said that uh, uh, he knows of the Canopy King, the last king of the Northern Elves, and how his uh, 
<clears throat> kingdom must have fallen to ruin since uh, since he passed. Hey, Tempest is going to tell him that I can tell you a little bit about him. I can tell you about uh, his palace. I can tell you how to access said palace. Um, and I can even tell you that the lineage of Orduna is not necessarily over, but I would expect some quid pro quo in exchange. Oh, uh, I'm not sure that uh, knowledge of how to access the palace would be particularly useful for me. It's uh, very, very far to the north. Uh, for anyone to travel such a distance would take many months, and I'm afraid my adventuring days are long since past. Uh, but no, the knowledge, uh, for the sake of knowledge, is still of interest. Um, the, much more in interesting is uh, uh, this talk of the Orduna line continuing. Uh, I had uh, believed, as did uh, all scholars who wrote on the topic, that uh, the Canopy King was the last after his son died before him. Irene will be shooting uh, Tempest looks at this point in time. Tempest is going to... Uh use his barbarian damage resistance to ignore your looks. <laughs> <laughs> that blocks psychic damage? It doesn't Apparently. psychic damage. I'm actually I'm actually weak to psychic damage, so Tempest is squirming a little bit. <laughs> uh but no, he'll say, well, I can I'll trade you knowledge of the continuation of the Canopy King's line, but that's pretty valuable information. So I would like two things back please um he says the knowledge of the continuation of the canopy king's line may be of great value to some but i can't think of any uh, who would be so interested here uh, the elves have had little to do with the humans since uh, the founding of our kingdom uh, I imagine the elves of the south would be extremely interested in this, however, as uh, the royal line has been diluted. <clears throat> so, for your information may be of interest to me, in that uh, if this siege ever ends, uh, we may uh, send a delegation to the elves and trade this information with them for a great deal more. Is that a yes? Two pieces of information for my attestation and proof of the Orduna lineage? Yes. And Tempest is going to say, okay, I want to know about the Horgoth orcs. I want to know how close they are. I want to know how <laughs> numerous they are. I want to know if they are anywhere close to the city if there's some way that we could potentially reach them within you know a couple days travel in time to get here prior to the siege and tempest is just going to say that like yep i want to get them back here before the siege to help defend the city and he's then also going to say i would like the information and lineage and I can't remember the name, I apologize for it, but I would like the information and lineage of Duke So-and-So, the Duke who has been antagonizing Katiara. Okay. Um, the information on the Horgoth orcs, I'm afraid, will not be as uh, interesting to you as you hope, uh, but we do have books that are older now um, regarding their appearance and where they make their home. It is uh, quite a far distance to the south. Um, it would certainly not be a day's travel or even two. You're looking at several weeks and it would not be easy travel as you would have to go around the Lake of Tears and through mountainous terrain filled with unimaginable horrors. Um, uh, so they are quite removed from us, but uh, uh, we have never had uh, difficulties with that particular tribe this far north. Uh, the, the stories that I have heard of them are more of their uh, continued antagonizing of the uh, Velshini elves. Um, they were known to have sacked several 
elvish towns um, throughout the Gorgodian jungle. Um, but uh, be- beyond that, I really can't tell you much. We haven't had uh, uh, any dealings uh, with their people um, in in living knowledge. In, in, uh, yes, there's no one living that I know who would have dealt with them. Oh, Tempest is going to deflate a little bit, and he's going to say, are those the only orcs in the area that you're aware of? Yes, uh, there are no uh, orcs anywhere uh, around the Kingdom of the Sun. Um, It is primarily human population in this area. Um, There are gnomes to the uh, southeast in uh, Steamton. There are stories of uh, lost civilizations to the south. Um, and of course the elves in their jungle, but uh, no, the, I have not heard stories of orcs coming into these lands uh, in a very, very long time. Okay, never mind about orcs then. Um, and the lineage about the duke. Yes, <clears throat> as for the, the lineage of the duke, uh, we do have uh, family volumes. Uh, they're not quite up to date these days um however uh, they they are uh, a, a few generations back um you might have better luck uh speaking with the duke himself uh for i'm sure they have uh, up to date family trees oh i'm sure that'll get my chance for that sooner or later but um do you have like you know Little anecdotes or stories about his lineage, like little little details about his ancestors, maybe anything salacious or gossipy, even. Oh no, no, nothing like that. Um, Duke Isaac Weston comes from a, a long line of royal bloodlines. Um, uh, there is uh, certainly uh, some inbreeding, as you would expect, of any royal line, but it's always been uh, several generations between the families remarrying themselves. So there's uh, nothing particularly salacious there. Um, uh, it's uh, no, been a, a solid family who has helped the Empire of the Sun uh, from the beginning. Well, I'll take what you have on his family tree and his uh, last couple generations of ancestors then. Certainly, certainly. We'll uh... I'll show you those books now. I believe that you owe me some information. And Tempest is going to launch into a story, and he's going to explain that in his travels in the Northlands with his companions, they encountered a certain amount of historical documents and uh, hidden pools of knowledge in which they were able to confirm that while the Canopy King and his son died fighting against the undead, the Canopy King's brother, Lysanthir Orduna, or at least that's the name that the entity that uh, claimed, or the entity of the family, uh, went by. And Tempest is going to say, all of us here have even met with this Lysanthir Orduna, and he confirmed that he had not one, but three children directly of his line one girl two boys and that is long and that and that i know for a fact that these three children direct descendants of the orduna line are still alive and are fighting the good fight um and he's going to say unfortunately i don't have any written sources for this but you're just going to have to to take my word that's true i'm very happy to attest to this uh under a zone of truth or you know allow somebody access to my mind if you want to have my mind read to confirm the truth of it but there are three living heirs of the orduna line and what are their names road stare intensifies <clears throat> their names yes the, the knowledge that it exists that uh, family exists does uh, little without actually having names that can be checked and referenced. You already mentioned this Lysanthir Orduna, who I have not heard of before. So Tempest, I... Tempest is going to cross his arms and say Lysanthir is a prophet. Uh, and the Orduna name was sufficient that even while 
walking the Fey Wilds and meeting with Fey creatures, they trembled at his name and were terribly afraid of of the Orduna line. Are you sure that you want to take this risk by learning these names of these individuals? If I do not have names to go with the rest of the information, the information is useless to me to trade with the elves of Velshini. And Tempest is going to nod and say, very well, the three of them go by the name of Katiara, Ismigdrasil, or Duna, and Friend of Fey Friends. Uh, Katiara, Ismigdrasil, and Friend of Fey Friends. Is this uh, a joke? And Tempest is going to shake his head and say, nope, um... I have reason to believe that friend of Fey friends was tricked by a Fey and forced into changing his name because he is an uffish oaf who is often very stupid. It is taking everything in Rhodes' power to not crack a smile right now. <laughs> um, you're not lying. Uh, give me a persuasion check. I'm going to toss it out here. Rhodes, how dare... Well, no, it's not Rhodes' fault that I used my inspiration immediately. Okay. Um, <laughs> one disadvantaged persuasion roll coming up. That's not terrible. Sorry, my foundry crashed, so I'm just, uh, just rebooting it. Um, if it's not in the log, I rolled an 18, which became a 17, and a 12, which became an 11. Yeah. Yeah, 11 is not terrible. Um, <clears throat> he kind of narrows his eyes at you a bit. And uh, and says, well, this friend of Fey friends sounds like an interesting fellow who could probably spin some tall tale. Honestly, I believe he's actually much more straightforward and blunt when it suits him. And would it suit him to be honest if he was telling stories of ancient elven lineages am i back can you hear me yeah there you yeah are. you're back and terrifying questions were asked um he asked um if he if i would tell the if some person who's not in the room would tell the truth if asked about ancient elven lineages if, if he was giving information about ancient elven lineages yes i think tempest is going to lean in and say uh I think he'd be very nervous about giving away truths that aren't necessarily his to tell, but compelled by the strict duties that were laid upon him. I think that he wouldn't lie to you, but would be very nervous about getting other people that he cared about in trouble. And I think you have everything that I promised you, and this conversation is over. And Tempest is going to stand up and uh, try to turn around to walk away. Is <laughs> uh... He sits back in his chair and he, he eyes up Yerine and Rhodes. And as as you leave, he says, Thank you very much for the information, friend of Fey friends. We may be in touch later once we get the chance to speak with the elves. Oh, no reaction, but Tempest is walking faster. <laughs> Yerine has been looking like a deer in the headlights for quite some time now. Her expression doesn't change, but she'll follow him. And won't say anything on her way out. Uh, Rhodes will also say nothing to confirm or deny, uh, but he will bring up the rear, and he's not in as big a rush as the other two. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yeah, you guys have no problem getting out of there. That was a terrifying little twist, Ryan. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, so you guys head out of the library. We're going to head back to... Uh, Yzmir and Katiara as they get to the Temple of Denir. Um, so you can see that uh, as you approach the temple, it is very busy around here. Um, there's just a, a ton of people, uh, too many for the temple. Uh, there are tents pitched outside of the temple, um, and uh, you see clerics moving about the masses, offering healing and prayers to those who need it. Um, you see soldiers who've been injured uh, making their way to the temple. And uh, yeah, it's it's just, it, it's much busier than any other part of the city that you've seen so far. Why, why, why is, do I just feel like something happened? Well, 
these have been the people helping everyone, right? So, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, well, um, is, is there like a orderly queue to go in, or is this just a bunch of people milling around? It's just a bunch of people milling around. There's no, uh, there's no order in the area. Well, um, uh, I'll, uh, I'll try and lead my way through this morass and get us inside so we can talk to someone. And I hold out my hand to her. <sighs> okay. Right. Here we go. Yeah. Um. As we go, Yzmir is going to, uh, just stay close enough to. Katira so that she can talk quietly. Um, while we're here, do you think it's worth warning them about the Gareth and Shero issues? Pro well, Even first... If they don't feel like listening, they would know. You know what? I, I, th I think that'd be a damn good idea, but first let's see if they're even receptive. Right? I mean, like, let's see how they handle our, our request, right? Well, I mean, if things are if other temples are having issues, I'm sure they want to know. Well, I don't know if everybody down here is going to be as secretive as uh, they were up in Nordgard, but uh, we could assume that these guys might be a bit brighter or less paranoid. You know, what? one's got to hope, right? Temple of Knowledge. Got to hope they're willing to listen. Yeah, yeah. Come on. We, we're going to get you fixed and we're going to do some good, right? Can do some good. I don't need fixing. I'm just trying to brace myself. <laughs> well, I, when, when I say fix, I mean reassured, calmed, uh, feeling more in control of the situation, right? <sighs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Let's see if we can deal with that. And I give her hand a little squeeze to show I understand. Now, am I finding it hard to make my way through the crowd? Uh, yeah, it's... Uh... It's pretty dense. Um, there's just people crowded in, especially the closer you get to the temple. Um, people uh, seem to be uh, almost frantic, um, crushing in, uh, calling out for for healing and for prayers. Um, you know, people holding up their children and all this kind of thing. And the, you can see. Uh, I have to mute my computer. There's. So many beeps. Um, <laughs> uh, there's uh, uh, at, at the entryway of, uh, of the temple, it's it's raised up, and there are um, there are priests there who are trying to keep people as calm as possible, and and uh, casting spells when they have them. If it looks like things aren't as dire, they're uh, offering medical treatment uh, with with. Uh, basically medicine checks they've got healing kits up there and stuff um and they're just doing their best to to deal with uh, the crush of people who uh, are requesting their uh, their power their skills and their time let's take care of you first but i think on the way back maybe we uh Help maybe out. i try maybe yeah yeah um we can always say if they if they're uh, monetary and they they need to something to help us out we we could offer that as part of the payment right yeah that's that would be something well let's see what they need first we have a few things we could trade too that that's for sure all right and so like um now if you remember i have my pan pipes on kind of like a necklace mm -hmm. so with my other, like, I swap hands with uh, Yurene, so I've got my playing hand free, and I'm holding her with my off hand. And okay. I just, like, quietly start playing, like, a calming, relaxing tune, like, trying to use that as kind of like a bubble uh, to try and calm people as we make our way through. Okay. Uh, can you give me a performance check? Certainly can. God, I love my bonus. <laughs> Uh, you play a calming, <clears throat> a calming song. Um, it uh, doesn't really seem to be doing much. Uh, the the people here are uh, too much in a frenzy, looking for what little help remains in the city for them. Um, and uh, as as you're making your way closer, uh, you hear one of the priests say, "We're sorry. We have no more magical healing 
If you can be healed using regular means, please stay. Otherwise, you'll have to come back tomorrow. Um, and you see quite a few people in the crowd uh, muttering, turning away from the temple and, and heading off into the city with uh, all sorts of uh, general kind of maladies. Uh, give me a perception check. No. Eleven's not really going to cut it. Uh, Both of us, or? Yeah, okay. use mirror. You can give me one, too. Nope. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, there's just too much commotion going on, too many people flooding around you. You don't notice any uh, anything in particular as they, uh, they head off. Um, but uh, you guys do manage to make your way up front, and you see uh, several clerics dealing with people who have, you know, my, fairly minor injuries, uh, bandaging them up, that, that sort of stuff. Gotcha. All right, so uh, have we made it to the doorway yet? Uh, yeah, you, go, you guys uh, aren't in the temple proper, but you're uh, at the the platform where uh, where the priest, you see a, a number of priests working. Now, um, is it possible for me... Okay, uh, I go up to one of the priests. Uh, excuse me, my good sir, uh, father, uh, however you proper designation goes. Um, I, I have a relative here with me who's pregnant, and uh, Grace here um, is looking for midwives, and it seems like that's something that isn't around here too much, but we were told that... you. You guys might have some midwives or knowledge of midwives in this city so that, you know, that she could, it, it, it's her first child. So, like, she's a little more anxious, right, you know? So, um, I, I'd really be appreciative if you could uh, help us out with that. The priest uh, looks uh, just exhausted, like dark bags under his eyes. Um, kind of slouched. Uh, he, he looks at you, listens to you, <clears throat> and he looks at Yareen and He's or, or Yudmir, sorry, and and says, uh, "You don't look like you're terribly far along. Um, can can your your anxieties wait, or do you do you need someone urgently? Do you think there's a problem with the child?" It's. For me, it's more peace of mind. For the father, it's peace of mind. But um, we might also be able to explain a bit of the issue other temples are having. <clears throat> I kind of raise my eyebrow. We, we have some understanding of what's going on with the other gods. The, the Temple of Denir has been gathering information from the other temples as uh, this catastrophe has been unfolding. So we, we know a, f a fair bit of what is going on and why. It's why you'll find all of our priests here at the temple and not on the walls risking their lives and our God for everyone else's well-being. It has created some difficulties for us, but um, the caretaker of the temple of Foltus came by the other day to, to warn us of these elder gods named Shiro and Daurath. So uh, if, if you have more information, I would be happy to hear it, of course. Uh, if you could make it a written submission so that we can all read the same information, that would be, of course, better. Um, uh, as for your your anxieties and, and need for peace of mind i do understand um, i wish i could give you more and at that uh one of the priestesses uh comes forward and she says oh i'll help you don't don't worry about him he he has no tact when it comes to helping women in need what what can i help you with to to help ease your fears I with to say my knowledge is limited is probably an understatement. So I guess just even getting a general idea of what to expect so that as things come I'm not caught off guard would be a good start. 
I can I can do that fairly quickly. Um, yes, please please come inside. I'll I'll uh, write you a general list of what to expect. How how long how far along are you? That's a racked five, question. Five weeks, almost six. Early still then, very early. Yes, um, I can I can definitely help you with that. Um, is any anything that you are experiencing now is uh, if you are experiencing anything yet, that would be rather rather minor. But, uh, but yes, yes, please please come in. And she she heads in and uh, finds a desk, some a blank scroll and uh, pen, and starts to write you uh, a list of what to expect. Um, if you have another one, we I would be willing to fill it out. Um, we were the ones who told the uh, priest from Voltus what to expect, so we can give a more de- just as detailed uh, explanation for everyone. Oh, perfect. That, uh, that would be excellent. And she hands you uh, a blank scroll as well. Um, and she she starts going to work writing down a list of uh, possible symptoms that you may experience and when generally to to expect them uh, in terms of uh, trimesters. Okay. Um, and while she's writing these, mirror, we'll look to Katya. Um, were you, did you want to still help people out front? Uh, well. <sighs> What I was thinking of was doing a specific song that, like, maxes out uh, everybody's healing efforts. But if everybody's spent, uh, that one ain't going to work much. Um, however, I mean, I, I can run around and use uh, some cure wounds, uh, if nothing else, with uh, those people and spare supplies. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'll do that while you're busy uh, transcribing uh, the the wealth of na- uh, information you got. Yep, yep. And I I, I look at uh, the priestess and I'm like, is is there kind of a, a triage situation here? Like, uh, if if I'm going to cast cure wounds, I, I would assume you want me to do it on the worst cases and give them a better chance. Well, unfortunately, we. Just sent the worst cases away. Uh, we we only have so many priests and so much power amongst us to hand out magical healings in a day, and we're often spent quite early uh, as the need is great. Unfortunately, we just can't deal with everybody uh, as they come, uh, and the other temples have run into their own problems. Uh, fault of well, or Azuth. All right, well. Yeah, while she's uh, still looking, I I look out. Are is there like any people that are still kind of lingering and hoping and you know like whatever? Uh, pro- there, there are people who have collapsed uh, nearby. There's there's tents with people uh, in them. Uh, like there's no shortage of people who are staying until the next day when people have uh, healing magics available for them again. All right. Um, uh. Uh, Grace, you, uh, it, could you just keep looking up and checking to make sure I don't end up getting swarmed by the desperate? Um, and then I set off towards the first person that I see that's just like totally collapsed and do a rudimentary look and make sure they're not dead. Okay. Uh, give me a medicine check. Okay. Uh, the first person that you find uh, just laying in the street is uh, not dead, uh, but gravely wounded. And worse, uh, you see signs of necrosis around the wound. Oh, damn. Uh, that, may, that may be beyond me, but let me see. Necrosis uh, takes a greater uh, restoration, does it not? No, lesser. Okay, okay, I still don't have that. But at least I can heal him. Um, so I'm going to slap him with a uh, Cure Wounds 1, first level. Mm-hmm. Okay, so seven hit points to him. Yeah, uh, the soldier's eyes flutter open. He offers a small thanks and says, "You're most gracious." Uh, uh, it, it's it's the right thing to do, isn't it? Uh, and you you have bigger problems. You got to make sure you get back here early tomorrow. And uh, 
uh, get get your bigger issue taken care of. All right. So I should stay here. You're saying if if you can find a proper place to sleep so that you can rest up and not get exhausted, um, perhaps. But I don't know if they're gonna you know like try and shoot people at any point or not. You know, like I ain't one of the guys from there. I'm just trying to help. My my house isn't far uh, south of here. I'll I can just go home and rest. Take it easy. Yeah, the uh, the uh, the blessings of the gods on you, man. And uh, you know, take care. Thank you very much. And uh, he goes uh, limping off home. Uh, actually, <laughs> uh, come here. Uh, it, it, I may, maybe I need to. Yeah, yeah. Is excuse me. What's your name, sir? Uh, why, why didn't I have it open? I I always have the fancy name generator open uh, for exactly this kind of thing. Uh, my name is Robert. Okay, Robert, come, it, 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 take take my arm and and let's get you up because I think maybe we need to keep you under uh, observation um, and you know make sure that uh, make sure that. Uh, you don't have any kind of relapse, you know, right? I'm, I'm feeling much better after your spell. I know, but I'm but you, you, you've got you've got other issues, <clears throat> and they can sneak up on you and be right nasty, right? Like you don't want to all of a sudden be like projectile uh, vomiting and pooping at the same time, right? Uh, oh, that sounds awful. Oh yeah, that's terrible, man. <laughs> Subtle. Like, 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 it's the nastiest. Uh, so, like, let's get you up and introduce you to uh, the priests here so that they can keep an eye on you because they might be able to do something about it with natural medicine rather than just, you know, magical, spooky stuff. That, you know, like, I, I, I'm not a doctor. I don't know. Oh, okay, if uh, that's what you think is best, I'll, I'll go with you. I, I, I rightly appreciate your sensibility, sir. And so I take him up, and I'm like, okay, uh, you know, this gentleman may have issues that are like beyond what I can do. Um, and I wait to see if they pick up on the necros necrosis or not. Um, the uh, the priest. Okay medicine check and yes immediately notices the necrosis and you see his face turned down and he sighs heavily he says unfortunately our magical healing is spent for the day and we have received word from outside of the city that there is a cure that does not require magic but they are cut off from the city they cannot get here well I, I'm, I'm just figuring like uh, if it ain't gonna happen before like uh the next day, right? I mean, then you can get you can use the magic to take care of it, right? It's just to keep an eye on and make sure he doesn't have any complications and you know like spreading it around. You know what I mean? I understand. We will we'll find a chamber for you to rest, good soldier. Thank you for your service to the city. We appreciate it immensely. And uh, he takes the soldier uh, into the temple and Take finds care, him. Robert. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, healer. And he he heads in. And I just kind of face palm for a moment, and I'm just like, "Oi, you stupid! Kid. You pay attention! God damn it!" And I go back out into the crowd, and I'm looking for. More people, so like however long it takes uh, Grace to uh, transcribe uh, the document, I will be unwilling to keep healing up to my max on uh, first level spells. Okay, how many first level spells do you have? I've got three more left. Uh, yeah, you easily go through those. Like the first tent that you find, there's three people who need healing. Right, and then after that, what I'm going to do is try and find a group and. I'll uh, use my Song of Rest, so I'll burn an hour of time and uh, try and help everybody there regain as much as they can. 
Sounds good. Um, Music Mirror doesn't take you an hour to write everything out. Um, is there anything that you wanted to do while he's doing that? Um, I think in general, she's going to be <clears throat> asking about the condition of the city, it, where all the fighting is focused right now. Uh, do If it's undead that they're fighting, uh, are they, have they had to deal with the uh, spreading bites? Um, and um, yeah, just making sure that they have the information they need to last longer. Yeah. Um, they'll tell you that the fighting has been uh, less of late. Uh, in the early days, it was uh, quite dire. Uh, there were undead piling up uh, across the river and up the walls. <clears throat> um, they quickly learned that uh, they needed magical healing to help anybody who uh, was bitten and had necrotic wounds, uh, although it was possible that they would heal uh, naturally uh, in some cases, so they would usually wait as long as they could before expending uh, magical healing. Um, it's It's been along the south wall near the gate that the fighting uh, continues for the most part, although Undead spread as far as the eye can see in all directions from the Empire of the Sun. Um, they have been told that there is an herbal cure for uh, the zombie rot, uh, but they haven't been able to get it to the city uh, because the people who have knowledge of it are um, are outside of the swarm of undead, uh, but they sent uh, a carrier pigeon in with news of it and a recipe uh, for it, but they don't have um, the supplies necessary to make it, uh, the, the types of herbs that they'd be looking for further south. Uh, but apparently the, uh, the people carrying uh, some bottles of the cure uh, also have uh, herbal supplies to make more if they can get inside the city. Uh, but right now there's just uh, no way that that can happen. How far are they? Um, it, the, the note wasn't specific on how far they were. They were staying out of sight of the zombie horde. Um, which uh, stretch, stretches on uh, a, a very long distance. So basically it comes down to someone's got to fight their way or get their way through and find their way back. Yes, and they have tried to send out uh, groups of soldiers uh, to, to no avail. Um, the, there's they, they've had no success in dealing with the undead. There's just too many of them, and it's not all just, you know, simple skeletons and, and zombies. There are uh, larger, more powerful entities out there as well. Um, so any kind of force that tries to leave the city uh, meets great resistance quite quickly. Okay. Well, maybe it'll take a small group, but, but good to know. All right. And... I heard um, Prince Bartimus had gone north to get help. Any word on if he's coming back? Uh, we have no way to be in communication with him. <sighs> just, just curious. <clears throat> um, other than that, I think Ismir is going to focus on getting the write-up, basically what she told uh, the priests of Foltus. Uh, yeah. Basically, so that they have all the information they need. It's just... Um, yeah, <laughs> lost my train of thought there, but yeah, it's okay. Um, um, also, while I'm doing the song of rest for that group, yeah. I'm also like uh, trying to listen if they have any rumors about uh, the Duke or anything about the internal politics of the city. Um, you uh, are are you giving them any like kind of probing thoughts to like get them talking about it or just hoping that they'll talk about it naturally uh, it, it would just be not like a direct probe but you know like you know like what's all going on you know like uh, I, uh, you know uh, I don't really know this city so well so I mean while I'm while I'm doing that if you guys could tell me anything about it you know, like who, who's who's good people to know, who's bad people, you know, good sections of the city, bad sections of the city. I I really appreciate it. Thank you. They all look at you very curiously, 
Like you, you don't even need to roll an insight check for this. They're all very surprised that you don't know the city and say, uh, one of them outright says, the city's been under siege for months. How are you here if you're a newcomer? Where did you come from? How did you get in? No, I'm, I mean, I've been in the city, but I've been so busy with my own work, I haven't had a chance to socialize, really get to know anybody or anything. I mean, I mean, I'm, truth can be told, me, I'm, I'm kind of shy. So can you I, give me a check, please? Uh, which check? Deception. Oh, boy. Well, <clears throat> oh. <laughs> you're, you're lucky that is isn't uh, one D&D where ones on skill checks are automatic failures. Um, they buy it, and they're like... Uh, and they give you uh, some basic information about the city. Um, they say, of course, if you can be in Old Town, that's the place to be because that's the nicest part of town there is. Um, you know, that's where uh, all the best shops are, where uh, King Athelric and his family live. Uh, King Athelric is well thought of uh, amongst the populace. He's been... Uh, uh, visible during uh, everything that's been going on. He's uh, led defenses of the city. Uh, he sent uh, Prince Bartimius up north to look for any kind of aid he could find. Um, uh, the Queen, uh, Queen Dameline and Princess Mortelaine are also uh, very much beloved. Uh, the, the, the other nobility are all, uh, you know, they've all offered up their own house guards to help defend the city against the undead. Uh, they've all been very giving, um, you know, uh, offering what supplies they can, um, offering their healers. Uh, so it, it, they they feel like, you know, despite the siege outside, um, if there is anywhere in the world to be during a, a zombie apocalypse, uh, they're happy that they're here. Um, the the magic market that you're in in the east end is also a nicer part of town uh, as is the the south side uh, residential area is pretty nice uh, if you get more to the west in the south you, there's a coliseum uh, which has been closed down uh, for the, the duration of the siege uh, they haven't really been feeling like having uh, fights for sport when there's real danger right outside their walls um, but that's where you'll find like soldiers quarters uh, and training grounds all that kind of stuff uh, the general or the people in charge of uh, the defense of the city uh, if you go to the north of the magic market the north side uh, gets uh, a little less nice uh, people around the docks can be a little bit more shady and uh, to the west along the port uh, is the, what's n known as the murky market uh, where a lot of uh, bad dealings go on. And most good people try to avoid that part of the city. All right, we appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and I'm going to assume that's the spell is over. Everybody's healed up as much as they can. Um, I am going to look around. Uh, uh, do I need to do another medicine check to see if I spot any more necrosis? Um, you can do a perception check. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, you take a more thorough look uh, through the crowd of those who remain uh, with the people you've healed, having moved off. And uh, yeah, you're not seeing any other signs of anyone uh, having necrotic injuries. Uh, all right. I head back uh, to Yzmir and see if she's all finished up. Uh, yeah. As, uh, as you go into the temple to check on Yzmir, Yzmir is finished up. And just as you guys get together, uh, Yzmir, the room that the soldier went into, uh, they've posted a couple of clerics outside the room, and you hear moans from inside the room and thuds against the door. <sighs> Tempest, Rhodes, and Yeri. Damn. Damn. <clears throat> I need to send you one question. Okay, Ryan? Sure thing. <clears throat> Sorry, did we jump to, to us? Are we... Yes, and uh, Yerin just had a couple of questions, uh, so I just answered those in the uh, chat. 
But All yes, right. we are going to you guys. So I believe Rhodes and Yurine were going to help me burn down the library. <laughs> Incorrect. We are going to the Duke's Manor. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have to burn down the library. It's all good now. Mm. Oh, he's meaning the other library. Well, we don't have to burn down any libraries yet. We'll hold that in our back pocket. So yeah, I guess we'll head on over to the Duke's Manor. Um, I mean, we know where it is. We followed his major domo there the other day. So do you guys have any plans as to what we're doing here? Definitely not. <laughs> well, um, considering we know that they are on the lookout for a certain acquaintance of ours and uh, you got pin cushioned, I believe that's more than enough reason to um, find out a bit more information. Are either of you able to cast that spell that Izmir casts? The clean up, don't smell so bad, look nicer spell? <laughs> oh no, that would be handy, but... But I did want to check. Can I take a look at your wound and see if I can do anything about it? Tempest, that's called a bath. No, Yurine, Izmir has a spell for it. She just waves her hand and she prestidigitates you to look clean. Yes, but in this instance, it's called a bath. <laughs> well, if you don't have the spell, you don't have the spell. Uh, Yurine, I don't think that you can. Rhodes already tried for today and said that it's inoperable. So let's try again tomorrow. And okay, fine. If if neither of you has pressed digitation, Tempest is just going to uh, find a convenient alley, strip off, uh, put on the very, very wrinkled and ill-maintained uh, fancy clothes that he bought for your guys' date way, way back in the past, and uh, <laughs> rejoin you having taken some efforts to alter his appearance. <laughs> Yurene looks around, but there's nowhere to change that isn't, you know, much more private, so... Tempest, you actually look worse. You should probably change back. <laughs> well, but now I'm not so easily recognizable, right? Um, I'm I'm pretty sure you're the only one like you in this city. Yeah, you haven't seen any other half orcs. So now you're just the same half orc, dressed a little bit nicer, looking a little bit worse. Uh, well, hmm, hmm. Look, okay. we're not we're not actually attacking anybody. We're just scouting out the manor, right? Well, yeah, but since I identified myself to his goon squad, if they find me in the area, they're going to think something's up, probably. So that just means I guess it's up to Yurene or myself to be sneaky. Uh-huh. I guess that means it's up to me to be sneaky. No, 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 I'll help. <laughs> <laughs> you uh you didn't sound very committed there for a second, Yurine. I, I I just uh, yeah, whatever whatever you say. I wanna help Tempest be safe and Kitiara be safe and everybody be safe. So you just tell me what I need to do. Okay, so, I'm are you staying in your wrinkled fancy clothes or are you getting changed again? Well, since Rhodes was mean to me about it, I'm gonna go back into the alleyway, strip down and get back into my normal clothing and armor. And uh I'll just tell them that I'll hang out here like a block or two away, but I'll have the Stone of Sending. If uh, Yurin, if they get in trouble, call me in. I'll get there in a real goddamn hurry. Mean or honest? <coughs> okay, do do them do either of my party members notice that? Because it doesn't sound like they left just yet. No, this is when you're in the alley. Oh, okay. So, uh, uh, mm, has it happened after they left to, to go scout the manor? Yeah. You're alone when this happens. Okie dokie. Sorry to step on the lead. Uh, you guys go about your business. Are we Are we both going? What are you and Yurene doing? Spell it out for the DM. What is your guys' plan here? <laughs> I don't know. My honest goal was to keep Tempest away from the Royal Library, so uh, Rhodes is, is grasping at straws here. And Yurene has no clue how to be deceptive, so she is totally following Rhodes' lead. Me to set the temple. <coughs> Oh, this is this is great. Uh, so Rose is going to double back, I guess, to go to Tempest and be like, okay, look, this was your idea. What what do you want us to look for? You find Tempest reading a note. It says. I didn't, I, uh, I didn't realize you brought some back alley <laughs> reading with you, buddy. Uh, Tempest is going to sigh and say, Rhodes, would you turn around for a moment, please? Uh, I guess he will, but he'll be reluctant to do it. I am message. And uh, with that, I'm just going to say, well, I was rather hoping that, uh, you know, you could maybe case the joint, look for security, but we should get out of here now, right now. And uh, you'll notice that Tempest takes the, a piece of paper, 
kind of slathers it in his wound and just sort of sticks it uh, to the wall and then flips the double birds up to the sky. And we're going now. Here we go. That is a really confusing thing for you to do. No doubt. And he is pushing Rhodes and saying, come on, sugar mama, get a move on. Mama? Uh, but yes, Rhodes will follow along. I'm assuming, did Yurin turn back with him or was she still ahead? Oh, she'll follow Rhodes because she doesn't know what she's doing, so... Okay, Nick's, uh, Nick's on the scouting. Maybe we should just find where the other two are. Tempest is going to mutter to the two of you, so while I was standing in the alley, an arrow came out of nowhere. It had a note on it that said, Hi, we are in incredible danger for just having come here, and I fear that if we go back to find the rest of our party, they will be in danger, because we'll lead our tr- the hunters right to our musical friend. Oh, no. Can either of you catch a tail on us right now? Can I make a perception roll? You can, sure. and me as well? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah there's, there's a few uh, that look pretty suspicious. Uh, on top, on tops of walls and uh, on rooftops. <clears throat> and they're not being all that subtle that uh, they're looking at the three of you. Oh, God. <laughs> she just blanches... Uh, yeah, we definitely have lots of attention. Are the two of you willing to do something about it? Ryan, numbers? Uh, you can see eight people on, on rooftops and walls that are watching you carefully, uh, each armed with uh, a short bow and uh, short swords and daggers, that sort of thing, all in leathers. Uh, and one of them you recognize as... Did I write down his name? Oh, yeah, Fennel. For those of us who weren't here, Fennel is... Oh, right. Fennel is uh, the spy that works for Duke Isaac Weston. He's the leader of the crew that turned me into a pincushion. He's also the one that was in the bar, that, uh, the inn that we went to, that recognized me. Yeah, he caused all kinds of trouble last session. Okay, look, I agree with you that we need to do something about this, but we're a little outnumbered right now. Last time they uh, ganged up and took advantage of me. I've got a pretty neat way of turning the tide, but it's going to put the rest of you in danger. Do you want to try and pick one or two of them off? There's eight on rooftops. My math says this is bad. I know I know how I'd shoot from up there, and we're not in good shape. If we can lead them into a tight space, I can do some pretty nasty business to them. But they're all on separate rooftops right now. And we're having this talk as we're just quietly hustling along. Um, are they following us? They certainly are. Well, we have a tail now, so we can either try and evade them. We can split up, and they'll probably stick with one of our quarries, and then we can try to meet at a safe place later. But I think we're going to have to deal with this. No splitting up. I don't suppose. Can... Sorry, go you ahead. Guys... You guys continue walking down the street. Uh, can you give me insight checks? Yep. You sure can. <clears throat> Tempest, are you going to do one? I did. It's just my internet is slow. Yeah, no problem. Um, Rhodes and Yerin, uh, you note as uh, you're hustling along that uh, the uh, fennel on uh, the rooftop of the Temple of Palor uh, is following you, and he's uh, making hand signals. Um, and as you look around, you note that there are uh, city guards in the area who are taking note of his hand signals and keeping an eye on you. Uh, he's recruited the city guards to help? This has become a far bigger problem. I don't know how we get out of this without getting arrested. I've never been arrested for anything. <laughs> oh, you're about to learn. Nobody's making any overtly uh, you know, aggressive moves towards you or anything. They're just all keeping an eye on you. He did suspiciously show up at a noble's house. <laughs> Look, one of the options is, I will do ascending to Izmir now. We find somewhere to lay low. We'll just have a nice day of shopping, maybe a couple drinks. We give them zero reason to do anything but tail us. Or we lure them into a building. I pull out the Dark Star and massacre them under the cover of Eternal Night. That's going to get us arrested. Honey, that's Dalreth talking. 
Oh, Tempest looks very taken aback by that. <laughs> I mean, not the bit about Dowreth. You call him honey. He's just like, he's melting like butter. <laughs> <laughs> I, all I can see in my mind is like, honey, you sound like Dowreth when you're hungry. Eat a Snickers. <laughs> uh, okay, so you're proposing that you're going to send a sending and we'll meet up with our party at a different date? when we can be sure that we're not being tailed. But right now, I don't think it's in our best interest. We're either going to get severely hurt or detained, and they're going to find him anyway. I think we're going to have to deal with this at some point. I don't think that we're going to be able to get out of this without a proper fight, especially if we link up with the rest of the party. But fine, we can delay I'm with you that we should fight. I don't think we should fight where we can get arrested. We're not going to help him at all if we're all behind bars. Where did our party members go? They're, uh... Uh, yeah, I believe that you knew they were heading to the Temple of Denier. And you suggest a place where we could meet up with them. And tell them why we can't right now. I will prepare a sending for them. <laughs> where should we meet? I don't know this accursed city. <laughs> Um, are we in, like, kind of a, a merchant area? Uh, yeah, you can see uh, the marketplace uh, close by. Uh, there's lots of uh, merchants' tents and stuff set up uh, just outside the Temple of Baylor. Cool. So Rhodes is going to divert just a bit to, like, come up to the closest tent and just be like, hey, we didn't get a chance to to wander around here. We're looking for a a new spot to wet the whistle, so to speak. Where's Where's the best place to go for drinks and food here? Oh, the best place to go would be the South Gate Inn. Very posh. The second best place to go. Second best. Because uh, well. I, I think we were we were staying at South Gate, right? <laughs> uh, no, the South Gate Inn. You were staying at the North Gate Inn, uh, closer to the port. Oh, my mistake. Then I think we're okay with South Gate. Okay. Uh, so he's going to turn and look at Tempest and Ismir like, huh? W- what do you say? Uh, Tempest is going to look at the merchants and say, excuse me, merchant. Is there a place of nature, a preserved place of wildness in the depths of this city? No, no, nothing, nothing like that. I mean, you get uh, a few uh, smaller parks with a, a few trees here and there, but uh, nothing that I would call a nature preserve. Well, Tempest will shrug and look at Urine and Rhodes. All right, let's go be boring. What does this merchant in particular sell? Uh, this merchant in particular sells fish. How much for a fish? A comically big one, if at all possible. A comically big fish? <laughs> um, he'd take five copper for a comically large fish. I will hand him five copper, and I will hoist this fish over my shoulder uh, like a club as we continue on to the Southgate Inn. <laughs> you think they're going to let you in with that? I think I'm going to smack a bitch with a fish if anyone gets too close. <laughs> we should have bought two fish. Uh, so at this point, you do note that you've left uh, the Duke's Manor and uh, the Fancy Pants Noble uh, houses and whatnot behind. Uh, nobody's following you on rooftops anymore, but you do note that you've got uh, several patrols of city guards. Uh, not, like, really close to you, like they're going to harass you, but they're definitely uh, making sure that they're uh, keeping in line of sight of you. Do we want to find out what they've been told and why they're following us? Sorry, guys. I just got to step away for a minute or two. I'll be right back. Um, Were we going into the inn? I think yes. Okay. As soon as we are in and have a seat, uh, Rhodes is going to work on that sending. Um, You guys head into the inn, and it's very high class in here. And uh, the person at the front desk is not even apologetic when they say that... uh, you there's a dress code and you're not matching it oh sorry i i mean i guess that's fair maybe we should have asked for the second base second best place (laughs) uh excuse me good sir do you know where the second best place to go for uh drinks and the like are uh well they they say normally it would be the starlight inn uh to the south uh south part of the city um but with all the fuss going on with uh, a lot of soldiers in the area and uh, all, all that. Uh, you might be better going to the North Gate Inn. It's not quite as nice as the Starlight Inn, but it's a lot quieter. 
Uh, would our dress code match that of the Starlight Inn? Sure, yeah. They, they would accept adventuresome types such as yourselves. Well, I appreciate that you said it nicely. Hey, uh, what's uh, what's the deal with your city guard? How uh, they're they're pretty good at their jobs, right? Excellent. Yes, uh, we have virtually no crime in Old Town, and they're not really like it's not a political thing. They're not really swayed by any of the greater houses in the town or anything like that. Not that I'm aware of. Excellent to know. Uh, and he's gonna look to Yurine and I'm assuming Tempest and be like, so. How about that uh, Starlight Inn? Sounds good. And we will continue wandering, and Rhodes will continue paying attention to either our tailor or trailers or the guards. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you can give me uh, perception checks with advantage. Yep. Uh, it's easy to see that uh, while they don't have as many uh, people tailing you, there is still uh, a group of guards that followed you out to the south side of town, uh, but they uh, kind of peel off down another road, um, and you can see that there's uh, a couple of watchers on rooftops in this neighborhood who are uh, keeping an eye on you. How You're many guards? Freaked out by this. Uh, there's no guards anymore. They've uh, they peeled off down a side street. About how many tails do we have now? Uh, they've. They're still spotting a couple, uh, one on each side of the street. Down to two. Do we want to play some games? Well, so, question. Could we handle it with the book? I'd rather not kill people if we don't have to kill people, if we can make this dude back off by something. Um, I don't think they're after us because of the history book. I think they're after us because Katiara murdered the guy's son and they want to find Katiara and wreak their Richie Poo vengeance against him. Right, but maybe we can find something there to make him back up. Do you think? I didn't murder him. I killed him in a fair square duel. In any event. Um I mean are you suggesting I start looking for embarrassing history facts? Because quite frankly my only motive was to present this to KTR and challenge him to write a funny song. So <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was thinking about that. Uh, while we're walking, Rhodes will do this ending in that case. Okay. Do we all get to hear what Rhodes muttered? W would you like to? <laughs> yes, because I'd like to be critical of it if uh, if I decide it doesn't convey all the necessary information. It is only 25 words. Uh, so he sent, City Guard is allied with the Duke. We are being tailed. It is best to stay apart for now. Wish us luck. <laughs> we, they don't know where we're going. <laughs> Or where to meet us? Well, they shouldn't meet we us if we're being end. failed. Yeah, that's kind of deliberate right now, I think. Ah, um, okay. I I can't advocate enough. I think that we can handle these two. There's probably a few more that we can't see. But wh why don't we have some stunning swashbucklery rooftop battles? It'll be so much fun. Let's get arrested. <laughs> not arrested there aren't any more guards this is knives in the dark and and battles between spies look you guys are full health got all your spells and resources right would you like me to top you up i don't need it i i really don't 1v1 i can tear these jokers apart because they're not going to be getting advantage on me i'm not going to be the beefy juicy meaty filling of their sneak attack sandwich again even if they have backup, I'm going to deal with that this time. Kid gloves are off. So if the two of you can go with each other, take one of our watchers. I am so happy to go after the other one. Um, and she'll throw panic glances at Rhodes. Uh, look, it's, it's going to come bite us in the ass sooner or later. So I'm with Tempest on this one. I'm so sorry, Irene. Oh, goodness. Okay, worst, Yurine, worst case Yurine. scenario, maybe Yurine should be ready to run. If she has the best chance of losing them on foot, she has the best chance of getting back to the other two if something goes south. Uh, Tempest is going to say, look, Yurine, you are the arrow of my heart. You are a brilliant huntress. You know exactly what to do in these kinds of situations. Find us good ground. Find us a place where we can take this fight to them. Try and figure out a way where we can obviate their advantages and come up with a plan. 
stop thinking like a noble woman and start thinking like a hunter in this moment. I know you can do it. You can do anything. And I'm just gonna jump in and say after Ysmir gets the setting, Kitiara's knowing exactly what's like Kitiara is told what she finds out. Uh, and Rhodes will perk up and be like, uh, so Ismir wants us to not get arrested because she can't do anything for us here. Uh, she says don't draw attention or give away that we are to be watched more uh, and to lose the tails and meet up with her. So I think we should dispatch these two and then probably go meet up with them. So am I supposed to run and find spaces or help? I think you should help us dispatch these two, but I think that if you use your skills, you can possibly find us a more advantageous way to fight them. Okay, Ryan, I'm looking for, as we're traveling now, I am scoping for defensible places where we're harder to be killed immediately from the rooftops, etc. Okie doke. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just setting up a map here. And it's time to battle. You guys get me in so much trouble. <sighs> Here. Man, Izmir's gonna be so mad when she finds out Rhodes misinterpreted the message. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> okay, uh, so you guys are uh, in the middle of a city street. Uh, there's a few little market stalls, a bunch of people standing around, and uh, these guys uh, to the left and right of you are your tails. Uh, they're up on the rooftops right now watching you. Just if I had them on the rooftops, you wouldn't actually be able to see them. Uh, so they look like they're on the ground right now. <laughs> That's a lot more than two. Well, there's just general I, people in the area. It, like they're... It's only the guys that are in gold that are the tails. Everybody else are oh, just okay. bodies, civilians. Gotcha. So witnesses. Yes. Gotcha. So, Ryan, as we're moving, which direction have we generally been moving in? Uh, you have been moving towards the south. Um, <clears throat> so, like, this building here would be uh, the inn that you were heading towards. Do we want to go in the inn? There's lots of people around here, or do we want to keep traveling south, guys? I vote we duck into the first alley. Tempest? I want to ambush them. Let's get into an alley. Okay. Uh, there are alleys to the left and right of you uh, that you can see where you are over here yep. okay you guys coming you two take that one i'm going to take this one apart away from other people how are you going to get him to come down with cleverness and charm Rhodes, which way are you going uh where was the okay i see where you went i will follow you here and tempest is going to split off from the two of them and start heading for that other alleyway okay <clears throat> uh Tempest, you note, uh, and this is pretty much all the time, that uh, people look at you a little bit strangely as you walk through town, uh, just because they've never seen a uh, half-orc before. Um, are they acting a little bit nervous? or uh, you Not know? really. More just curious. They feel uh, fairly safe inside the walls of the city, it looks like. Okay, this guy that's sort of along my path to that alleyway, I am just pinged him. He's just a random dude? Yeah. Okay, well, Tempest, as I walk by, can I just mutter at him? Some bad shit's about to go down. You and your friends should peel off out of here. Okay. Uh, what kind of check do you want to make with that? Mm, I mean, I'm good at intimidating, so let's say intimidating. Okay. Oops, I was clicked on you when I rolled that. Uh, but anyway, I got a five. Uh, yeah, they, uh, they look rightly scared of you and uh, kind of move off. And I'll move into the alleyway. What is that? <laughs> uh, so, I've seen the Doomstar in action a couple of times. Oh, it's, no! <laughs> it's, it's basically the reverse of light. <clears throat> but I think it's pretty reasonable that Tempest would figure to, it would go around those corners, and it would potentially be having those people in its aura if he drops it. Uh-huh. Do I figure it's going to go up high enough to uh, encompass the thief inside of it if I put it down on the ground? Yep. So I'm looking at those innocent civilians, and I'm looking at that thief. I need to make a roll. Wow. Well, that is uh, as extreme a roll as you can get on a D100. What does a 1 mean? 
I think that a one means that Tempest, having spent the day with Eurene, having reaffirmed the love that they have for each other and that she's forgiven him for all of the terrible things that he's done recently and she's been encouraging him to make better choices, I think he pushes the Doomstar deeper into his pocket and doesn't take it out. Okay. So what's Tempest going to do? Are you, are I mean, you still towards that alley? Yeah, I'm, I'm walking into the alley. Okay. You can move your token. Uh, game is paused. I don't think I can. Shouldn't be. Try again. Gasp. <clears throat> yeah, as you uh, head into the alleyway, you see that there's uh, a couple of guards standing there. Uh, or soldiers, sorry. Uh, standing there having a chat with each other. Uh, they They look up at you, but don't pay you any more mind than anybody else has. Casting my glance back across the way to Urine and Rhodes, what are they up to? Uh, what Rhodes, what, sorry, go ahead. What are you guys up to? Um, so the tailor, like the guy tailing us is still on the roof, right? Yeah. Uh, so Rhodes would have just gone to stand in the area. He is also looking around to track guards. Uh, can I assume that he sees Tempest looking back at them or... Uh, yeah, I, I assume that you guys are going to want to work in a coordinated effort, so uh, seeing what Tempest is up to shouldn't be a problem. And is there only guards on Tempest's side, or is there guards on our side as well? Uh, just on his side. And I'm assuming I won't be able to see them from this angle? Uh, no, you can't. <laughs> uh, so Rhodes will lean over to Yurene and be like, alright, do you think you can pick this guy off without being seen? <laughs> He just leaned over and said hi to me and winked at me. Uh, so Rhodes is instead just going to look up and wave and be like, so uh, why are you following us? I was told to. You just you just do things you're told, no thought behind it? Oh, well, if there was no coin behind it, uh, no. But, uh, you know, it paid well enough. Oh, oh, yeah. And so what? What You're just following us? What's what's the rest of what's going on here? I don't know. Do you ever get to stop following us? Or are you now with us because you know then you should come walk down here well you know i got uh i got the sign follow you i follow you i didn't say nothing about not talking to you so i figured i'd see well you know what's up why am i following you <laughs> what we wanted to know oh well uh yeah I, I don't know i just see the hand signals saying follow those guys and uh here i am so what's your name mick hi mick nice to meet you hey hey mick uh you don't think any of these people are going to try and hurt any of us, do you? I have no way of knowing that. <gasps> really? Yeah. Like, uh, I see a guy down down the street there. Um, if he gives me the signal, yeah, I'd have to attack you. Um, but there uh, hasn't been any, any kind of sign like that that I've seen. Just just watch. So I figure, you know, no harm, no foul. Uh, so Rhodes is going to point to the to the guy that Tempest is nearby and just be like, that guy, right? He's the one you get the signal from? Uh, no, not that guy. He's, there's another guy further up north, down the road. Where? I don't see him. No, you wouldn't be able to from down there. Oh, but like, whereabouts then? Just just out of curiosity. If we come up, could you show us? Yeah. He's, I'd love to know who's trying who's uh, telling you to follow us. Really shouldn't be uh, coming up here. I'm probably not going to get paid if you come up here. Did they say anything about that? Oh, well, you know, them's the rules. Uh Tales only uh, so good if uh, the network gets seen, you know. So, uh, I mean, haven't you already spoiled our your pay by talking to us? No, probably not. Uh, there was no signs for uh, for hush hush or anything. So, whatever. <laughs> As a player, I did not expect this guy to be so conversational. Me neither. No, <laughs> that was <kind> of fun. <laughs> <laughs> totally threw you guys for a loop. So he almost, so... Fe he almost feels like the uh, baby dragon. Oh, Audrin. Well, uh, well, Mick, here, here's a thought. Um, I know that you said you can't really invite us up, but like, what if we just went up ourselves? I mean, we know we're being tailed. There's nothing to stop us from going up there to also get a better vantage point. That That's really not a knock on you and what you're doing. Well, it looks pretty bad if you guys come up here and I'm all cozy, cozy with you. It's okay if you're down on the ground, but uh, you come up here and they're probably going to give me the sign to stab you. What if we go up on the building next to you? They'll probably give me a sign to shoot you. For going on a roof? What kind of horrible people do you work for? I don't know. Are you really okay with it? Yeah. Well, then I don't feel as bad if we end up having to stab you back. That's a really mean thing to say. Well, 
you know, I'd prefer to not have to stab you. I'd prefer to just get paid to sit here and chat. But if you're going to make my life difficult and the life of my employers and whoever employs them and on and on, uh, then, you know, uh, uh, I got to do what I got to do. You know, I mean, I've, I've got mouths to feed at home. Uh, I'm just just doing my job. Oh, uh, humanizing the best. <laughs> but if you make our lives miserable, you're OK with that. I mean, that's what I get paid to do. I get paid to follow orders. And uh, so far, my orders are just to, to watch you. How much are you getting paid? Oh, you're going to try the old double cross. Pay me more. Uh, I'm getting paid a couple gold pieces for this. Mostly, I just don't like the fact that you're following me and maybe willing to stab me. Like, that's really creepy, dude. I mean, that you aside, are you willing to take a bribe? Well, are you, are you willing to stab me? Not if, unless you try and stab me. Like, I just don't like the turn of this conversation one bit. Yeah, and so she I, kind I, of flounces I, it with her back to him now. <laughs> I, I think we're pretty settled that we're not going to try to stab you or shoot you unless you try to stab or shoot us. And I'm not going to try to stab or shoot you unless you get up on the rooftops and try to figure out who my boss is. So, I mean, as long as we're doing this, we're, we're fine. Um, but I, you know, I'm just, uh, just fair warning. Uh, you know, if, if my boss is, is looking out for you, I don't know how many bosses there are up the line. Uh, like, where did you guys come from in town when you started getting watched? Look, Mick, I'm, I'm going to be real real honest with you um the way i see this is your boss is probably going to try and do something mean to us anyway so unless you really really give us a reason to actually play nice with you yourself mick and I, i'd really like to i get that you're a family man i i got kids myself it's uh it's yeah uh, oh, I'm just, oh you know the oldest is two. Oh, oh young family then absolutely yeah. um my, my kids are a little bit older yeah, and I just like I get it, man. I I don't want to I don't want to have to do anything that's going to wreck your family life and uh yeah, I just I think we should just be able to go our separate ways. Look, I'm giving you a chance to just walk away, Mick. I walk away and I'm get paid. And then, you know, the wife, oh, don't want to deal with that. Right. And it's an, it's an easy job. I couldn't believe it when he told me that I was getting two gold just for watching you guys. Uh so, I don't know how much he's getting paid. I'm probably pretty good, though. I mean, we can also give you some... We can also pay you off as well, so you don't go home empty-handed. Your wife never has to know. Never has to be an issue. You can just tell your kids that their dad did such a solid day of work, and we can just all go our own happy way. Okay, here's my dilemma. The money sounds great, but if my boss finds out that you paid me off and I, quote-unquote, lose you... um gonna look real bad he's probably not gonna hire me again long term not such a great plan uh but if you were to actually like make an effort at running and like you know maybe duck into this inn and sneak out through a secret uh secret tunnel that they've got to another building you know really hard for me to find you um and you left like some maybe a bag of coins over in a barrel over there uh, just across the way by those stairs um you know, we could make that work. Can I sense motive on that, please? Would yeah, give me an insight. Can I also roll a sense motive? Yeah, Yerin, you cannot get a read on this guy. He is just so far from your sensibilities that he could be being truthful. He could be totally shitting you. And there's a whole bunch of his guys inside the inn just waiting for you. Rhodes, you actually get the feeling that this guy's on the up and up and he's willing to work with you if you pay him enough. I don't actually know how much money Rhodes has. <laughs> <laughs> Better check. We uh, all so should have at least 300 gold. Check your inventory. I, I can't remember if he gave any of that to his mother. Uh, I have a fair amount. So Rhodes is just going to like kind of take a casual lean up against the wall and be like, you know what, Mick, you're you're a great person. I think we can arrange something like that. And he's going to look to Yurina and be like, Mina, I think you should go talk to our friend hey, you and get him to come over here. Okay. Uh, she'll go ahead towards Tempest. Okay. Tempest is just sort of mad dogging the other thief and then sort of like stealing glances towards you and like occasion kind of like giving you like the, can, can I kill this guy head bob from a distance? You know Tempest, so you know that that's what he's bobbing his head at for. <laughs> <laughs> she shakes her head and walks straight towards him and just says, um, I think you need to come with us. Rhodes has done something interesting. 
Tempest's eyes narrow and say, have the thieves gotten? No, that's not. Uh, that's He's not going to accuse you of being in league with the thieves. He'll tamely and meekly go with you. <laughs> okay, we're back. <laughs> so, hey you. We, uh, we met with Mick over here. He's a great upstanding guy. He's got a few kids at home. And uh, we have worked something out that uh, we're going to make it look a little bit like we were hard to tail. We're going to... Uh, it was through the inn, right? There was like a secret tunnel to the next building. Yeah. Uh, so Rhodes is going to relay that information to Tempest. And he's like, we're just we're just going to slip into this inn. We're going to take the tunnel. We'll, we'll leave some money at this location for Mick. And he's going to like look up and give Mick a thumbs up. And he's like, he's a great guy. And that's how we're going to get out of this, okay? Was Mick the one that stabbed me in the back specifically? Uh, you can give me an intelligence check to check your memory uh, for his face. Because you were pretty uh, pretty surrounded by strangers there. Yeah, you've got no idea if he stabbed you in the back. Well, I guess Mick survives to see his children another day. Um, Tempest is going <laughs> to grunt, grunt and grind his teeth a little bit, but he'll go along with you guys. Look, hey you, I'm just trying to make sure that we all get out of this safely and don't get killed afterwards. <laughs> and he's going to like give Tempest that very pointed look as in like Izmir is going to skin us alive if we start a commotion. Tempest is going to mutter that if the thieves betray them because there are no honorable thieves, then he is going to tell Rhodes, I told you so, and go on a rampage anyway, so it's fine. Let's just go into this inn, I guess. Uh, so Rhodes is going to look up and be like, hey, you hear that, Mick? We, we really hope you're not uh, you're not trying to do us dirty here. No, I wouldn't do that. And Rhodes is going to give Mick a salute and lead on into the inn so we can give them all the slip. Did you leave coins where he asked you to? Yes. How many did he ask for again? He didn't ask for how, how many. He told you how much he's being paid. The rest is up to you. I would like to leave five. I would like to leave 30. Oh, that's a good call. <laughs> okay. Let's just drop a, a bunch of gold coins in the barrel, and uh, as as you're heading up the stairs, uh, Mick says to you, "Go into the first room on on your right, and uh, behind the picture of the old man, you'll find a secret door." I've taken thirty five gold out of my pouch. Okay. Rhodes will give a nod and be like, "Yo, I uh." I hope you take that money and use that for an opportunity to better your job situation here, Mick. Thanks. Nice chatting with you. And uh, yeah, Rhodes is going to go with the rest of the party to find the secret tunnel. Okay. Uh, so you guys head into the inn and uh, yeah. Are you, are you being quick about it? How are you doing this? Uh, he told us that we had to go into the first room, right? Yeah. First room on the right. Uh, let's just ignore the innkeeper and go to the door. Um, is the door locked? Nope. Then just trooping right in like we own the place. Okay. Not hurried, but not. Yeah, not like slow. very, very nonchalant, but like we're, Rhodes is at least walking like he belongs there and having the idea of where he knows, he knows where he's going is definitely ha ha adding to it. Okay. Uh, so you guys, uh, you guys get into the room, uh, closing the door behind you or? Yes. Tempest, Tempest is in the lead. Uh, Rhodes and Yurene, who's in the middle, who's at the back? Rhodes will take back. Okay, then Te Tempest will try and throw that painting as he's instructed to. Yep, and you find a secret door behind it. Uh, as you're in there, you hear Mick's voice from the front door saying, You cut out Ryan. Oh, uh, Mick is... Uh, you, you hear Mick from outside at the uh, main door to the inn. Uh, saying, Oi, where'd those three go? Uh, ducking on in behind the painting and taking off. Quickly now. Is there a way for us to put the painting back in place? Yep. We yeah, perfect. Work. I would like to make sure we do that. It's it's on uh, hinges that are hidden from the outside. So you can pull it closed behind you. And it's, uh, it's pitch black in here. Uh, so roads, you can't see anything. I'm so disappointed in Mick. What? Why? <laughs> Because he just came in looking for us. That was the point. Yeah, he, he started saying that he didn't know where we went. Okay. <laughs> well, fair enough. I was suspicious. <laughs> Apparently, Mick and Rhodes are cut from the same cloth. So I don't know what that says about Rhodes. <laughs> 
All right. All right. Uh, so you guys make your way through the tunnel. I assume Rhodes is hanging on to Yareen or something. Whoever wants to hold my hand. Sure thing. Okay. We don't have uh, time for this. Tempest will scoop Rhodes up into a fireman's carry and then just, you know, occasionally give him a good pat and squeeze on the butt because that's what you get for messing with my plans. <laughs> I, is this punishment or... Reward. Yeah, I'm, I'm unclear. <laughs> Well, Tempest thinks it's punishment. Rhodes can make up his own mind. <laughs> Rhodes will keep his own counsel. All right. Uh, so you guys dart down this tunnel uh, to another building and uh, come out the other end of a secret tunnel. Um, and you can hear muttered voices kind of soft in the background uh, from the other end of the tunnel. Uh, but you can close the door before uh, anybody opens it and takes a look and uh, make good your escape. Excellent. That's important. Back to the Temple of Denier. Uh, Yzmir and Kachara, you hear what are the unmistakable moans of a zombie uh, from behind the door where you left that poor soldier, Robert. Who has a name. Yep, Robert. I feel like, I, I almost feel like I have to do an old yeller scene. <sighs> well, I healed him. I hoped. Didn't work out. Yzmir's going to approach the clerics and kind of gesture to the door. Have you dealt yeah. with this before? Many times. Don't suppose you have a way to turn it back? Not at this point, nope. Do you, do you need some help? If you wouldn't mind, are uh, either of you religious? We. I've, I've never been too impressed by the gods that I've met. Would you mind doing the honors then? We'd rather not risk ourselves and the god if we can help it. Well, I healed him. And I brought him back here so he wouldn't potentially cause issues. So, yeah, it's on me, isn't it? Well, you did the right thing. Yeah, you had no way of knowing. And uh, the two priests uh, step off to the side away from the door. Is he wearing any metal on him? The soldier? Yeah, you remember him. Uh, you, I'm assuming there's a little uh, open door, uh, like a little. Yeah, there's there's a door into the room. Okay, uh, but is there kind of like a little flip? Uh, look, 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 see, or is it just mm. a solid door? It's just a solid door. All right. Uh, look, you open it a crack. I can blast him a couple times. No, nah, I've got something faster. Okay, so I go up and I open the door and I cast fourth level heat metal. How wide are you opening it? Yzmir's going to make sure you don't open it too wide. I don't have to open it much for the heat metal. I just have to see them, right? Let me check the uh, spell. Yeah, I just have to see it. So I can just open it a crack and just... Um, there's no save against that or anything. His armor just becomes super hot. Uh, and, yeah, roll some damage. 25. And that's... I gotta check the undead fortitude thing here. Uh, 5 plus the damage, 25. Yeah, he can't save that. His con isn't that good, uh, so he dies. <clears throat> well, I'm sorry, Frober. I wanted something different. I tried to make it painless. Uh, is there some place I can go and drink heavily now? Uh, one of the priests comes up and pats you on the shoulder and says, Yeah, of course. Yeah, thanks. Um, sorry about that. I hope it don't stink up the room too much. No, uh, the, the priests are already opening the door and gathering up the body and uh, dragging it out. <sighs> we should go. They seem to have things handled pretty well. And it's around this time that you get the sending from Rhodes. So she says that he's descending, and Katira would just hear a. Uh, <laughs> what? I um. Hold on, I'm checking the message. <sighs> hold on, she's like puts up one finger, which I think has become her. I'm getting a sending sign, and um, takes a minute to reply. <laughs> so I guess the other three got the city guard tailing them. They must have had a little dealing with your Duke friend. 
I don't like it that they're getting the city guard listening to them as well. Yeah. That well, makes me really concerned. It is, but <sighs> can't do anything. Don't know where they are. They're being tailed, so and Road said it's best to stay apart for now. Which I agree with because we don't need to get doesn't need to get worse. So I told him don't get arrested, don't draw attention, and we'll catch up later. Well, do we head back to the so, south, uh, to the north gate? I think get our stuff and get the hell out of there. I think it, it wouldn't hurt to go head for the north gate so that we can do that. And if we hear from them and need to change places, we can. All right. I so, think that's yeah. the best thing to do. All right, let's go. Okay, you guys head back to the North Gate Inn. While you're walking, um, what are the Irene Rhodes and Tempest doing? You guys have managed to get away and s sneak out of the building, and there's no tails around. Uh, the The door to the building opens up into uh, an alley, uh, so it's not one of the main roads, and you feel pretty confident that nobody's around. Tempest so, would like to use his lesser known barbarian ability to uh, not to rage but to pout very angrily. I haven't seen him use that one very much. <laughs> I don't think I've seen that one before. <laughs> no, no, it's actually very used by Tempest. Katira <laughs> is very familiar with it. <laughs> yeah, the 10th level pout. It takes a while to get there and it's kind of underwhelming. Martial classes have it rough in 5e. <laughs> So, uh, so Rhodes is just gonna place a hand on Tempest's shoulder and be like, "Look, I know, I know you were really excited, but look, this is probably the better way, and then when we can come back at it with a better plan, we now know that the city guard is also in on this." I'm not a child. Don't patronize me. I'm not. I'm talking to you like a brother. Grumble, 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 grumble. <laughs> come on, let's go meet up with the other guys. Well, I guess we'll go meet up with the other guys, unless anybody has anything else to say. Okay. Uh, what route are you taking through town? Not through the old part where we first got tailed. Okay. And I am actively looking to try and find people who might be watching for us before they see us. Okay. Yes, I would also like to be on the lookout for that. All right. Uh, so you guys can be helping each other, and whoever has the highest perception can roll advantage. I have plus seven. I'd also argue that we'd be trying to, you know, occlude our, our appearance, change of how we look however we could. Maybe sure. we'll grab a cloak or, or just, you know, obfuscate ourselves if, for somebody looking at us from a distance. Okay. Um, I am also going to cast Pass Without Trace. Okay. So Good we call. have plus 10 bonus to stealth checks and can't be tracked except for by magical means. We leave no tracks or other traces of our passage. Yep, sounds good. That lasts for an hour. And if you let me know, if we're not back to them by the time an hour is up, let me know and I will be casting it again. Yeah, you should, you should be uh, able to get through town in an hour. Um, <clears throat> but you're moving stealthily, so you're not going to be getting too far before they get back to the inn. Um, Izmir and KTR, you guys get back to the North Gate Inn. Before I go in, I'm like looking around. Uh, seeing if there's any obvious people casing the joint, looking for people, going in, etc. Right, give me a perception check. 22. Uh, you don't see anybody uh, outside of the inn taking a look for you or anything like that. Right, you see? You want to sneak a peek in the window and make sure there ain't nobody that we kind of recognize that's been bothering us? Uh, sure. So I guess Izmir can take a look. And I'm basically uh, helping her. So can she roll with advantage? Uh, well, problem is the shades are drawn. Hmm. Does it normally have the shades drawn? Yeah. Uh, when you've when you've been in there, they've had the shades drawn uh, in the daytime. Um, it's it, it's not exactly the nicest of inns. Uh, there, you get the idea that uh, you know it's a little bit shady. So they're. They, Do I know where the back door is? Uh, I imagine you would, yeah. All right, so I'm uh, I'm like, Gracie, follow me. And I go to the back door, and I just give like a couple of quick knocks, wait a beat or two, and then give another couple of quick knocks. Okay. 
Um, the door opens, and you see uh, the cook at the door. He's looking at you like, hey. what? God, I forget the name. What's the name of the bartender who's actually a, kind of a friend? Uh, the, that, he's the owner, too, isn't he? Yeah, Eldon Reed. Huh. Is Eldon in the house right now? Uh, yeah, he's out front. Uh, uh, is, is, can, like, you know me, you know I'm staying here, right? No, I don't tend to talk to anybody, I'm... Oh, yeah, fair, fair, fair enough, friend. Um, could you, uh, is there any orders that Eldon's going to be picking up quick? Um, I, there, I've, I've had a few orders for food. Uh, I, he doesn't pick up the food, though. He's uh, up at the front of the bar. Uh, be a waitress coming back for the food soon. I've really got to get back to work here. All right. Total, totally understand. Um, I'll, I'll come in through the front like a normal person. And you know what? I'll give you a tip so you know it was all on the up and up. I didn't mean to stress you out. All right? So see you in a, see you in a bit. All right. Have a good one. And he closes the door. And I just kind of face palm a bit, and I'm like, bloody hell, I thought it'd be Eldon that I'd... Ugh, making too many assumptions. Sorry. Sorry, use me. And... Izmi's not there. She's at the front. <laughs> oh, I thought I told you to come back with me. Never mind. Okay. So I come back around, and I'm just like, mm, acting like nothing happened. And it's like, well, should be all right. Uh, I'll go in first. That way, if I get stabbed, you can pull me out and make me better, right? And I just go in through the door. And looking nonchalant, slouched a little bit. You, uh... You open the door and head in uh, to the end. It's well lit. Lots of uh, lanterns and uh, fireplaces roaring. And so it is that you see kind of just leaning back in a chair facing towards the door, Duke Isaac Weston. And standing beside him uh -oh. is his son, Dorian. And the Duke says, I was wondering when you'd be back. Didn't I kill Dorian? You did. Did you, did, you say that out loud? did you say that out loud, or is that just a thought? I would say that, but <laughs> it, it it's basically like I wanted to make sure that it wasn't another son that I nope. didn't know about. It's the and same. It's like, the you guy stupid, you stupid it. git, you bastard! I put you down, you arrogant son of a bitch. And he's is behind him just looking like, what the fuck? <laughs> Do you really think that your pathetic duel would stop me from bringing my son back to the land of the living? Death is such a minor thing for people such as myself. You mean arrogant pricks? Hold your tongue, Kate Yarn. Why? You're trying to kill me because you I which I thought was justified because I thought the son of a bitch was dead, but you're still trying to kill me and harass my friends when you've got the when did I try to kill you? I know a group has been after me and my friends and harassing and killing us. Trying. Really? Who tried to kill you? Oh. I didn't order anybody to kill you. Well, Phil, uh, do you remember a, a little uh, brown nose called Fennel? Probably the one that told you that I was in town. My, uh, my spy master, yes. Uh, he told me about the incident where he and his friends came here to drink while keeping an eye on you and your group. And one of your friends came and assaulted him, so he and mine defended themselves. I did hear all about that rousing tale. <laughs> Oh, you, you you mean my friend came up and was, like, bad-mouthing them and trying to provoke them? And then they just used him as a pincushion? He didn't touch them. Uh, according to them, he knocked them out of their chairs and then threatened Fennel directly. There were... He weapons. was antagonistic, but he there never were, laid a hand. There were weapons drawn, and if you wish to speak of antagonizing, uh, it appears that your friend was the one who started the ruckus with my men. They had 
No hard feelings against him or you or any of the others to begin with. They were simply doing their jobs. All right, so are you here to give a, me a nice friendly chat about how I need to be a less of a dick? Or is there some other purpose between you and uh, my rival who I bested in school and didn't appreciate it? Well, that remains to be seen. Uh, Dorian is an accomplished bard himself. No, I am quite curious and interested in you personally. You see, it's not anybody who could simply walk back into this city when it is surrounded by undead. So I believe that you have some rather impressive skills. I have had... An extremely interesting life, and it has led me on very, very curious paths that would be of no use to anybody else, because there's nobody else that has walked it. And how I got in here, I can't get out of here at the same way. Was that so? If, 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 yes, because, like, if me coming here... Recognizing where the hell I was, do you not think that I would have just skippered out again? No, no, it depends on if the place that you came from was worse than this. The place I came from was a place that no mortal should walk, but I did. Yes, and perhaps you feared walking it again. No way of getting back there. Hmm. I did not open the path that I trod. I see. Well... Suffice it to say... I'm stuck in the city here like you are. And if you have a problem, if you feel you need to avenge your son's loss at a fair duel, you got him back. Yes, so why would you assume that there's any sort of avenging required? Katira, he was just pointing out you had skills he could use. I know. That I'm doesn't mean he's going to kill you. Yet. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Duke, Dorian, please meet Grace here. She is one of my companions. A pleasure, milady. Now, as Dorian is quite aware, I'm hot-headed. I fly off the handle quite easy. Mm-hmm. Grace has reminded me, sometimes I need to shut up and think before I put my tongue in gear. Thank you. I advice. It's one of the reasons why I treasure her as a friend. Now, if you are looking to form an... Oh, how shall we put this? It wouldn't be an alliance, because that would suggest I'm on the same level as you, and I'm not that arrogant, and I don't think you would like to be thought of as that way. But as someone in your employee, a subcontractor, shall we say, what exactly services are you looking for? Well, that depends. I've heard from Fennel. Uh, how did you refer to him again? Something like a lax spittle lackey or something like that. Right, yes, my, my spy master. He has been keeping an eye on you and your friends, uh, especially that rather difficult half-orc one. I'm quite curious about him, honestly. Uh, he is trouble. I can sense this sort of thing. <clears throat> but, uh, I digress. Uh, uh, they are making their way through the city at this very moment. I imagine they're going to try to find you at some point. So, why don't we just stay here until they arrive, and we can discuss the various skills that you and your friends possess, and see about a way to work together to mutually benefit both parties. What do you think? I think that sounds admirable. Right, then. Depending upon what those ends are. Of course. Let's just say that our surprising reintroduction with each other and the nasty words you spoke can just be forgotten for the time being. We can start anew. Your Excellency, I would... Actually, I'd like to take a moment to apologize and to acknowledge I have made assumptions and said hurtful things. Dory and I do not have a great relationship that does not have to affect ours. 
quite right. And honestly, I don't believe there's any hard feelings from Dorian. Is there, son? No, father. Excellent. That's right. <laughs> That's healthy. There's so many hard feelings. Dorian, <laughs> you, you keep your tongue still and I'll keep my tongue still. How's that? He's saying nothing to you. Excellent. Well done. So, can I invite you for a drink while we wait for your friends to arrive? What would be your pleasure? Eldon, please. Some of your finest wine. And Eldon nods and uh, goes about his work uh, getting drinks ready for you. Eldon, I think I need a great big whiskey. And if you have any dwarven, I think that'd be the best. Oh, no. They don't have dwarves in this world, do they? No. Okay. Um, whatever the top end scotch is in this world or it's like that's what i want and i want it in like a double okay of course your friend here uh i'm sorry my lady uh what did you say your name was grace grace would you grace us with your presence at the table as well uh, hmm. grace will have um, water Yzmir just kind of turns her head and looks at katira like you're ordering for me now <laughs> well every now and then I like to take care of my friends. If you want something stronger, I'll give it to you. I was going to say I'm good with water. All right. And when Eldon shows up, I pay for the round. Most generous of you, Katiari. Well, it's always good to start a new endeavor on the right foot, wouldn't you say? Indeed. Uh, that'll cost you 25 gold. Yep, I'll take it out of my inventory. <clears throat> oh, 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 I see everybody already made their way up to the end. Uh, yeah, I was going to announce that somehow I had snuck up on them if uh, KTR suddenly needed backup, but <laughs> between Rhodes and, and Izmir just wrecking all of the fun tonight, we have had no violent encounters and everything has been settled with words. So, um, well done, you guys. Jerks. He's very disappointed. <clears throat> Uh, so, yeah, eventually you guys do get back to the inn, and you find uh, Keitara and Yuzmir sitting at a table with uh, a very well-dressed man, and uh, actually two very well-dressed men, um, and just having polite chit-chat. Well, let me introduce the rest of my friends. Uh, this gentleman here is Ori, and he is a very good friend of Grace. There is him, you which is um, my half-orc and brother. And over there is Mina, the cute little half-elf. Um, may I introduce to you the Duke and Dorian, who I slew. And he's back up, obviously. Uh, You're getting some very confused looks at the moment. Agreed. Yeah, it, it, it seems that assumptions were made on me from thinking of how a commoner would react to his son being killed. And uh, the Duke, since he was able to resurrect, revivify his son, um, almost kind of, if I'm not too presumptuous, looked at it as an educational moment, a uh, teaching lesson for his son. Exactly. And, and uh, my panic's flight up north to get away from his vengeance was... Totally unnecessary. Well, maybe, maybe necessary for the first month to keep away. But then after that, I think everything would have been calm. Wouldn't it have been your dick ship? Yes, I imagine we could have come to some terms after the initial anger had uh, faded away. Um, and uh, the Duke, no one I had fled because I'm sure he spared no expense or work with Fennel, who uh, turns out to be his spy master. Uh, would have been coming through the city, and as you can see, when he wants to find people, he finds them. Uh, he's realized that all of a sudden, after me being months away, all of a sudden I'm back in the city, and he assumes I have talents and skills that he might make use of. Am, am, am I going too fast? That's all correct. Um, I apprised him of the how we got into the city is not something 
that I can recreate or any of us here could recreate. We walked places people shouldn't walk and we were tricked and dumped here. But he seems to have some idea that we could prove useful. Uh, subcontractors, uh, a group for hire, etc., etc. Is it, it, ha, Have I got anything wrong? No, quite right. Now that we're all here, I have a very specific need. As you may have heard, the city is rather stressed at the moment. With undead banging at the gates, they have archers firing arrows into our city, and they infect our people, and if we do not have the means to cure them of the infection, they sometimes turn into undead themselves. It is a slow war of attrition, and the undead are winning. I have received word that the Temple of Denier has received word of a cure for this zombie condition. However, those with the cure are currently outside of the city. Seeing how you recently came into the city, I was rather hoping that you might find a way out past the undead to get said cure. Do you think, given the skills of your band, that you might be able to pull off such a job? Might I ask why somebody hasn't just gone up or down a river and met up with them and went back through the port? We have had issues with the undead coming up from under the water uh, into this area of town. Um, we do have guards and such, but uh, our ships have been uncrewed for some time. Uh, most do not wish to take the chance of sailing away, only to discover that there are zombies clinging to the hulls of their ships and coming aboard while they are out away from land and killing the entire crew. This has happened early in our uh, skirmishes with the undead. What if we had a cleric that could turn undead when we got on the boat? That could be most useful. The clerics of the city are rather preoccupied and overwhelmed. If you have one of your own who could handle such a situation, uh, it would be ideal. I'm sure I could find a captain who would be willing to take you along with a small crew uh, outside of the surrounding siege forces. Then the trick is to get the word to the people with the, with the good stuff recipe to make sure that they're close enough to shore that uh, we can meet up and then sneak back. Yes, they used a, a carrier pigeon to communicate with us in the city. Uh, so we don't, we aren't familiar with them. We can't use magic to get in touch with them. Um, I'm not really sure how we would. So therein lies some peril. For once you are outside of the siege forces, you will be completely cut off from any sort of uh, reinforcements from the city and quite on your own to find those with the recipe, and uh, any doses of cure that they may have. There there was nobody uh, in that party that is known to someone in the city that could do ascending? No, the, no people, stone? the people with the cure are from outside of our city. Uh, apparently, uh, some sort of giant man came to uh, their fort down south and concocted a cure on his own and taught them how to make it. Uh, and they have been spreading the cure uh, north. And when they heard of our plight here, they wish to get it to us so that we may be uh, better protected against the undead. Well, everyone, what do you think? So Tempest has been bristling the entire time since this guy was identified. And the only thing I think that kept him in check was the fact that you guys hadn't taken action yet. Set the scene for us. It's the Duke and his son. Do they have anybody with them? No. Just the two of them. No guards, no obvious weapons. Oh, I didn't say there weren't weapons. And I don't think we want to start attacking. Currently. There are, are they armed? Oh, no. Yeah. With what? Uh, the Duke is uh, wearing finery. Uh, you can give me a perception check to see exactly what all you see. 
Hey, um, you see uh, a man sitting in uh, a noble's finery, uh, silken clothes, and uh, pantaloons with high socks. Um, but he also does have uh, a longsword on the table beside him, uh, and his son has a lute uh, in his hands, as well as uh, daggers at his belt. Yara, is it your wish that we work with this man? Well, what he's actually talking about is for the city. He's not being greedy. He's not looking to, like, use us as a proxy to take over from the king or whatever, you know? So it's a noble purpose. I had to kill a poor son of a bitch that I thought I'd healed because he turned zombie. If there is a cure, I want a cure. I have every intention of helping this city, and I already have plans on how we might do so. But I ask you again, is it your wish that we work with these men? That's my way of handling the situation. I'm confronting it, I'm dealing with it, and I'm accepting what I think is the best choice. Does that work for you, Tempest? I certainly hope so. Quit dancing around the question, yes or no. I'm not dancing, I told you, yes. What are they offering in exchange for our cooperation? In this situation, I don't think we really need... I, I wasn't looking for anything. You know, quite honestly, thank you. Thank you. Because, uh, Duke, I would say that taking on a task of this magnitude that nobody else in the city could do except us, and you deliberately scouting us out for that reason and hounding us so we could have this nice little chat. That's it not good enough. If we do this for you, Duke, you will get us into the palace library. That would be no problem whatsoever. Yeah, that wasn't too bad an ask. I don't know why you had to make such a deal out of it. <laughs> you ran I'm away done. from this city and literally didn't tell us about the dealings with these people for, for months. I saved your life several times before you even told me what you were doing in the north, and now we're all friends and hunky-dory. I don't like today. I don't understand today. But if this is what you want to do, fine. And Tempest, Tempest. is going to walk out. Tempest, how many times did I save your stinking ass, too? Already walked out, but like he, he stopped for a moment, and he, tur he turns back to look at you and just shrugs and keeps walking. <laughs> uh, roads will follow. I'm sorry. Uh... There's a lot of high, high feelings here, and there's been rather a lot of time we've been dealing with stuff that's a lot nastier than most people do. Well, you have Tempest's price. I think the rest of us would like compensation, and we're going to need supplies. Uh, supplies are rather thin in the city after such a siege, but I am in possession of... Uh, payments for you that I'm sure you will find to be to your liking. <clears throat> As your friend pointed out, this is a noble quest for the city, which has always been my first priority. And at that, uh, someone's got a high enough insight to see that uh, Dorian bristles at that. Um, but the Duke continues. I will uh, send Fennel out to find a captain who is willing to work with you, and uh, we shall reconvene to discuss these plans and uh, get our affairs in order. I will see what I have in my stores that may interest you and offer you concrete terms of payment for the job once complete. Does that sound adequate to you? I'll look at the rest. Which is used mirror and urine right now. I'm not. I think so. Very right. well. Uh, Duke, I, th I think I need to address Dorian. Dorian? He it's, been a, nod. it's been a hard time since I left the city. I'm still hot-headed. I'm still a better bard. But I've also come to realize that I need to change some things. 
I'm not going to say that we'll ever be friends or pals, but I offer you my hand as a person who bears you no further grudge and holds only hope that we can both walk away from this and not seek the other out. And I hold out my hand. Give me a persuasion roll. Yeah. He looks at your offered hand and doesn't take it. Understood. Best of luck to you. <clears throat> at that, the Duke stands, smooths his clothes, picks, his, picks up his sword and, and puts it in its sheath and says, Well, thank you for the very fruitful discussion, Keichiara and Keichiara's friends. I shall see you in the morning. Fare thee well. Come, Dorian. And together they leave the inn. And a good night's rest here, Duke. And we're going to leave it there. Oh, my fucking God. This took some unexpected turns. Maybe. KTRA has had a very, very busy day emotionally today. <laughs> as soon as uh, he wasn't uh, worried about being killed, he got pretty buddy-buddy there. <laughs> it's a bard. I will always try and charm and seduce and do everything I can to turn a situation to my advantage. 